my skin All is simple It's complexity Always begging me to let you in I follow your silhouette You followed so easy Followed so easy Ooh. And round and round and round we went Yet to give in to me Ooh. And the answer is a mystery Spoken softly like a sacred So easy
followed so easy Ooh. And round and round and round we went Yet to give in to me Good to see you. Good evening. Hello, hello. <laughs> we're just doing, we're doing another one of these. 
Uh, I was I was gonna finish the uh, the puzzle from yesterday tonight, but I don't know. I was just I was really into the uh, the the idea of doing a Lego set. <laughs> I uh, I was looking up online at like sets and stuff all day, so I thought I would uh, thought I wanted to give one a try. Let me adjust things a little bit. My microphone's in a funky spot. Alright, this should be a little bit better. I did notice the music yesterday. I felt like it was a little bit loud. My chair says hello. <laughs> so I'm going to turn down just a wee bit for today. <laughs> I actually meant to oil my chair today so it wasn't so squeaky, but maybe, maybe, maybe next time. <laughs> But we have our, our Pepsi. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. There we go. I actually don't know where Binks is right now. I think he was I think he was asleep in my living room. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, we got I, I did some some testing and some some stuff uh looking into uh what the the issue was yesterday with with why my OBS and everything was was taking up so much CPU, uh, and it's it's it was uh, uh, I th I think I got it, <laughs> I think I got it. Let me actually check now that I'm streaming. See how we're doing. Okay, so we're at like. 88, 90%, 83, okay, that's okay. Yeah, as long as we're not like pegged at 100 like yesterday. There's a couple of things that I feel like are using my CPU that should be using my GPU, so I might have to, to, to look into the settings of a couple of things, but regardless, that's, that's, that's back end stuff for me. It's okay. <laughs> But yeah, so, so I think I think two Salem's should be okay for tonight. My 3D looks a little laggy, but I might be imagining things. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've got that going. Um, I feel like I feel like the lighting on my 2D model has changed. <laughs> I always be messing with stuff. I gotta stop messing with stuff so much. <laughs> but regardless, so we've got our, our bonsai, our bonsai uh, tree Lego set tonight. Um, I actually, there was a succulent set. I talked about this on Twitter already a little bit. Um, but there was a succulent set that I had planned to go get. And it, it, it they were all out. I actually, I was, I was like reaching for the top shelf stuff, you know, where, uh, stores keep their, uh, overstock. I was like, I thought I saw one of the succulent ones up there and I reached up there and I got, I got caught by an employee. <laughs> it wasn't anything bad. They were like, I wasn't in trouble, but they were like, oh, just so you know, everything up there is already like, we just moved all of our stuff onto the shelves today. So, uh, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have trusted. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so we did find we did find this though. Uh, arrested for Lego crimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yesterday's stream, uh, uh, how I was kind of focusing more on what I was doing and just very, very uh, occasionally checking and checking chat and stuff. Uh, was kind of a game changer, if I'm being honest. It really worked much better for me. So I think uh, uh, we're going to go with that sort of um, layout, I guess, uh, uh, again today. So, uh, you know, uh, just, just a heads up, you know, of course, not ignoring anybody, just focusing on what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, this was actually kind of a kind of a cool set though because try not to be too loud because I am in the ASMR category and Legos make a lot of noise. 
But yeah, so there's like two variations. One with the, the green, one with the pink. Um, I think I'll probably go with the green for now. I think. Yeah, probably. So. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. So excited you found this. I have this exact set built in my apartment. Ooh, fun! Matchy. <laughs> Always been looking at those succulent of the fall dried flower sets. Yeah, I almost, I almost, uh, there was a dried flower set. I, I think I know which one you're talking about, like exactly, because I was, I was looking at it, but it felt a little Thanksgivingy to me. So I, I, I almost got it, but the colors were just a little too fall for me right now. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Do mostly green with a little pink. Ooh, I might have to... I'll probably build it all first just to do it by the book. Uh, sort of one one time. And then uh, after, maybe maybe uh, I'll replace some of, the, some of the, the greenery with some pink. I think that would be cute. I think that's the cutest idea, actually. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So, I've, I've, I haven't opened anything yet. I've just, I've literally... Well, I've opened the box, but... I haven't gotten anything out yet, so we get to see it all together. So, here is the little, I'm assuming, instruction booklet. <laughs> why two Salem's? Just for fun. <laughs> Just because I have two models and, well, I have three models, but I don't get a chance to use many of my other ones much. Mostly just my 2D, so. I only stream with my 2D most of the time, and I uh, don't stream much in the first place, so <laughs> gotta give, gotta give the others some love. <laughs> Salem's evil twin is here to help with the tree. It's kind of more like my good twin, to be honest. <laughs> 3D Lum is is 3D Lum has pure energy. <laughs> I truly have no idea. I don't, I never played much with Legos even as a kid. So I don't really have any concept of how long this is gonna take me. <laughs> There's a couple of these in here. I think that's everything it appears to be. All right. How many pieces is this? This is 878 pieces. Which sounds quite overwhelming if I'm being honest, but I've heard that the instruction sets um, are, are quite good. Um, so uh, uh, we'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I've never really had much experience with Legos, so. Mm -hmm. So we'll find out tonight. This is what I was talking about with this candle yesterday. How the flame is like barely lit. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so building the Sakura variant took a little over an hour, give or take. Uh, good to know. It'll probably take me six hours then. <laughs> Truly, anytime I hear like the amount of time something takes, it's not even like I don't even need to double or triple it. I need to like quadruple it pen pen pentuple pentuple it <laughs> uh so i'm a, i'm a slow moving creature <laughs> yeah so let's get this all kind of organized we've got five i'll be as quiet as i can about this but they are, they are just sort of inherently a little bit noisy, so. <laughs> so we've got four. We've got three. Two and one should be here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm assuming we're gonna start with one and two. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. This is so loud. <laughs> I'm sure there is an ASMR -y way to, to, to do this, but this is like something I've always kind of struggled with with ASMR, to be honest, especially live. Not, not so much my recorded stuff, but my live ASMR. I so badly want to be a gentle person. I want to be a delicate, I like, you know, I want to be a delicate with the things I do. And I'm just generally not. <laughs> I'm not a very delicate person. Uh, I'm a little clumsy. I'm a little loud. So... Uh, <laughs> one of my, uh, one of my siblings always tells me that when I come to, come to get the door, uh, that it sounds like I've, like, fallen out of my room. And I'm like, no! <laughs> I just, I'm just not, I'm not elegant. <laughs> but yeah, so let's... Let's go ahead and get get into this. We'll take a look. I'm assuming bag one and two are gonna be the ones we start with, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. Voice makes up for it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, nutmeg. Yeah, happy early birthday. I almost said congratulations. I mean, I guess we'll we'll tack a congrats on there. Congrats on your birthday. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh. All right. Oh, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, I, I figured out. Um, <laughs> is there something just ever so slightly ominous about congratulating somebody for a birthday? <laughs> Mm. I'm just gonna read this real quick. <laughs> Got a little blurb about our Lego designer. The bonsai tree specialist on the Lego team. Hmm. Yeah, I know the I know the pink is more on brand for sure. <laughs> it gestures to all of me, uh, but I just I've I've been really into like greenery. Uh, I was going to say lately, but honestly, even just kind of the past few years. Oh, I guess uh, they're moving to make a lot of their like Lego bricks and stuff from plant-based plastic. Sugarcane. Uh, make Lego bricks from sustainable sources by 2030. That's cool. Ah, okay, so it looks like we need one, two, and three first parts, so I'm gonna... Uh, I don't want things to get too cluttered, but I'll make sure that keeps in reach. <laughs> Sugar cane, no, so many Legos will be eaten. Don't eat the Legos, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> okay. All right, let's just go ahead and get right into it. I had a pair of scissors here somewhere. Here we go. Try and 
keep all my garbage in one place so it's not too messy to clean up later. I actually, I don't know if I'll keep it assembled. Sort of like how I was talking about like the um, uh, puzzle yesterday that I was working on. Um, I'm not super interested in like making like, a, 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 or having, I suppose, like a display piece. Um, it's more the actual activity of it. Like I, I enjoy like the end result and, and how it looks and everything on the package, but I'm more just interested in spending a little time uh, doing something tactile, something with a guide, something simple. <laughs> well, maybe simple is not the right word for a 900 piece Lego set, but <laughs> at the very least there's instructions, so. Hmm. I was trying to keep my light a little dim for ambiance, but it's making like the dark colors kind of blend together a little bit. So let me turn my lights up a little bit. <laughs> oh, here we go. And then I've got to move this a little bit. Got my. This is. I I I was rewatching uh, a bit of my my stream yesterday just to see how my setup was was working and everything, and my tracking was not not the greatest. So this is where I normally keep my my uh, uh, phone that does my my tracking. But uh, I tried moving it yesterday, so it wasn't in frame. But not that wasn't a winner. <laughs> Chair is very talkative tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try and get that fixed for next stream. <laughs> okay, so I've got... Okay. So we've got this. What do I need next? I need a couple of these, like... Stair step sort of looking pieces. Uh, oh, the brick separator. Yeah, I didn't. There was a little page on how to use this. I've never. I didn't realize there was a. I didn't realize Legos had brick separators. I thought you just pulled them apart. Legos are more advanced than I thought they were. If I'm being honest. <laughs> uh, they're also. <laughs> I, this, I don't know if this is, have Legos always been so expensive? <laughs> is this a recent thing or is this, has it always been this way? <laughs> I was looking and everything and, you know, there were some more affordable sets. They weren't the most expensive thing in the world, but... I was looking online, even at like some like off-brand kind of Lego sets, um, or like companies that do other like similar like building block style sets and everything, and um, it was more expensive than I thought it was. <laughs> I figured like a le like a complicated Lego set, like you know, be. Like 20, maybe not like complicated, but like like this sort of set would be like 25, 30 bucks. It was like on sale for 40. I was like, that's expensive. <laughs> like has it been stupid expensive as long as I can remember? Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. Remember inflation, though. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was just talking about uh, did my mouse literally die, like <laughs> half an hour after I started the stream? <sighs> the homophobia. Do I have any more batteries for this mouse? Hold on, just one second. I have to go get a battery for my mouse that just died.
I am literally so spicy. It's unreal. <laughs> I walked up. I got up for 10 seconds to get a battery and I took the back off of my mouse to put the battery in. And I don't know where I put the other part of my mouse. <laughs> where the heck? Oh, they, okay, there it is. There we go. <laughs> All right. Let's let me get a couple of these little like these little stair step pieces. Now I think we've we've <laughs> gotten all of my distractions out of the way. separate baggies so let's go ahead and I'm, I'm assuming it's like bag by bag because they don't have you opening like one before another I don't know that for sure but that's the guess I'm hazarding at this point absolutely see myself being the kind of person who like gets it like 90% of the way together and then having like a spare piece by accident being like huh where does that one go <laughs> I always used to open every bag at the beginning because I didn't realize they were numbered for a reason all <laughs> that sounds like so it's that sounds so stressful to deal with, like, after you've already done that. <laughs> My chair. I feel like I'm more frustrated by it than anybody who watches. <laughs> hmm. It's just like, I truly cannot like move. I can't adjust my weight at all. Like without it be just making the loudest screeching sound. Hmm. All right. So now, oh, a little condensation on the page. Whoops. Uh, so we need six of... Okay. Six of these guys here. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Yeah, 
yeah so we're just gonna kind of build the base first that's why i really like this one too because it wasn't just like like there were some that um some sets when i was looking and deciding what i wanted to get to do on stream there were some that were very pretty or very fun but they didn't they weren't like Like, when I have stuff, even though I'm not wanting to, like, really keep this to display it, I'll probably end up breaking it back down. Um, which is sort of a conundrum as to how to do that and keep everything in order. I mean, I guess if you have it all in one big bag, it's not impossible. It's just a little more tedious. Um, but I, I, I liked the fact that it has, like, it's like a tree in a planter and everything. It's not just, like sort of like a um something like loose i don't know how else to describe it but it's like it's sort of like to to me the the difference of like f hanging like sticking a poster up on my wall versus like putting it in a frame and putting it up um and if you just prefer putting posters up without a frame there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> i i actually preferred that for the majority of my life but um, just the past few years, I've really decided for me, I really like how stuff looks like when it's like framed, but just that sort of thing where it's like something that is prepared, like it looks like it's prepared to be put on display, if that makes sense. It's a little less higgledy piggledy. Hmm. Creaky wooden chairs, classic witch cabin vibes. That is actually true. That does make me feel better about it, if I'm being honest. <laughs> You're not wrong. It's just, you know, one of those things where, uh, you know, you're, you're your own biggest critic most of the time. <laughs> I need four of these little doohickeys. Hmm. I wouldn't mind it if it was like less loud actually. It wouldn't bother me. It's just the fact that it's like when it squeaks I can feel the earth shaking. <laughs> that's maybe that's dramatic. <laughs> but these little gaps here. Those are a little funky. Hmm. Well, which fourth their culture doesn't have a squeaky chair. <laughs> You are not wrong. You guys got me there. Uh, they actually give extra pieces on purpose now, especially small pieces. Ah, that's helpful. Yeah, I think I might, I might, I'm, I'll probably still do puzzles here and there. Like, cause I, they, there are some that I've seen and like looking around that I really liked. Um, but I think the, um, the guide like the confirmation of like, hey, this is what you're looking for. This is where it goes. Like, um, of like Lego sets and stuff is actually, um, it's for me. <laughs> it's for my brain. Okay, so I need this. I need. Four little like corner pieces. Hmm. The only thing I have I currently have framed are the puzzles I've completed. Ah. I think uh I think like framed puzzles like look fun and stuff when I see them like from other people and everything and see people with them up. 
but I think just for me, I, I, I think I prefer them as an activity rather than a display, I suppose. Although I do wonder if I'll actually end up going ever going back and like redoing like any puzzle or Lego set or whatever, I guess. Like, I guess only, uh, only time will tell, really. Look here, I believe is correct. I mean, that's sort of, that's the plan in my head, but you know, things don't always work out that way. <laughs> I've never framed much stuff, but now I have some watercolors from my grandfather and a Jurassic Park tra Wait, hold on. I didn't actually absorb any of that while I was reading. Let me try again. And now I have some watercolors from my grandfather. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh, that just reminded me of uh, a little bit of a story from when I was in uh, middle school. I remember... Uh, my school had like a little like, this is gonna make it sound like fancier than it actually was, but my school had like a little like art show for, and, and students, uh, it, it was like a local artist thing, but also like they could, like people like not students could come and like display their art and everything and it was on sale and stuff, but they gave the, the students a chance to put their art up and display it too and everything. And I remember there was a a piece that I did of a, uh, a pier, uh, I think it was like, a, like uh, I think it was like graphite or something. I can't remember. And I just remember I was like so happy with how this piece turned out and I ended up submitting it into the fair and, uh, and my grandparents actually came and, and bought it and everything it's just like a, a a sweet memory that i have of of like going to their house and seeing it framed up in their their living room for the first time it was a very uh a very nice thing for them to do mm -hmm. there we go yeah i want to get back into doing uh doing art one day but i think uh like obviously i don't think anybody gets into art and doesn't want to be good at art but i think i just want to like reframe things a little bit when i actually get back into it i think uh i want to just have fun doing it rather than like necessarily focus on being good at it if that makes sense I think I stress myself out too much over picking up hobbies and wanting to be good at them instead of just enjoying them. <laughs> mm. Four of these, got them right here. The fact that there's only one of these right here or now, like, is already, I'm like, is this an extra? What did I miss? What did I skip? <laughs> okay, so I need those four and ten of these. Two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's start from the outside edge. don't have any sort of no they don't okay needs to go there needs to go there right Yeah. 
Oh, was I? Oh, was this? Wait, hold on. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, one second, I'm struggling. <laughs> The Lego company literally gives me an instruction booklet on how to put every single piece of this together. Me does it wrong. <laughs> Did channel points go away? For, for a time. For a time they have. They'll probably be back uh, at some point with uh, some stuff that's kind of like a uh, Either rewards just uh, not or um, uh, channel point redeems uh, that are just sort of like silly little like flexing how many you have <laughs> or or um, some of like the chat based stuff uh, will likely come back. Uh, but right now I'm just I'm I'm a person who overcomplicates things. <laughs> uh, I am the witch who overcomplicates. So I just needed to, we just needed to go back to basics a little bit. Um, so things like uh, channel points, notifications, um, uh, checking, checking tra 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 chat <laughs> rather as, as often as I used to and stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of rolling back on a little bit, um, just keeping things a little easier for myself so hopefully I can be more consistent with being here more often. That's all. <laughs> I, I know I talked about this a little on uh, yesterday's stream too, so people will probably hear me repeating myself a little bit. But I don't think that's anything new for anybody who's been here for a while. <laughs> I repeat myself a lot. It's, uh, but yeah, so that's that, that's kind of the, the deal is that it'll be... There might be a little bit of stuff that, that people enjoyed that, that um, either is on hiatus, maybe does not come back, etc. But... I'm hoping that overall it improves uh, the experience with me being more regular and more here. <laughs> I just realized you were wearing a ring. It's super pretty. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is one of my favorite rings. Let me show ya. Go. And then I have. Uh, it's a little tarnished, but I have. This one here. But uh, I had another one that was like a little, it looked almost like a, uh, uh, like a circlet. And it had like little, uh, it had sort of like uh, Greek vibes to it. It's like a little like, bur like, like branch that was like wrapped around. Um, and it was, it was so cute. It was a ring I got at a, uh, a mall in Japan and it fell off. Uh, when I was uh, at TwitchCon, <laughs> and I, I think I know exactly where it fell off, but yeah, it was not a place I could locate. So, but I enjoyed it while I had it. So it's okay. There will be more rings. Okay, so I need four of these, I believe. Hmm. And then four of... What is that? That, that, 
Actually, you know what? Maybe let me let's organize these pieces. I might make this a little bit faster for me. Plus, y'all know how I love organizing some things now. Which is so funny, because I'm not really an organized person in my uh, daily life. I'm a little bit messy. <laughs> try to be as organized as I can, but it generally doesn't work out very well. <laughs> Lacy rings like that? Yee. Yeah, me too. I used to be very into like, like chunky jewelry and sort of more in your face style, but um, while I, I'm as I said, uh, very much not a delicate person as much as I wish I was. <laughs> um, I at least, uh, I enjoy things that have a delicate aesthetic. <laughs> if I can't, if I can't be delicate, I've at least got to try to look it, you know? Fake it till you make it. <laughs> Mm, loss is a part of life. Slash pause. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sweating it. I was sad about it, but. Mm. Are these the same? Okay, I think they are actually. At first, one looked like heftier than the other to me, but I think that's. I think those are all the same. Once we get through this piece, I think it'll be a little bit more visually interesting. Because right now it's just a lot of like black pieces, and uh, they're not picking up very well on my camera. <laughs> it sort of uh, doesn't look like much just yet. Once we get into the lighter colors, it'll be better. Mm. So interesting seeing another person's Lego building process. That's actually, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, I guess people probably would have pretty different processes. Yeah, I, I like, even outside of Legos, you know, because <laughs> I truly had not even, I'd never considered getting into Legos. It wasn't something I even thought about until yesterday. <laughs> um, so in my, you know, 16 hours of consideration on the topic, <laughs> I do think uh, watching people do stuff like this would probably be interesting in the sense of like, especially if you already like do a lot of it. First of all, just seeing like how a beginner approaches something like um, that was something that was always so fun for me when I would like go into people's streams and watch them play Hades. And I don't mean this in like a critical way. Um, and I was never like critical about it. It was always so funny. I would. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I, I used to play Hades quite a bit. Uh, I got into speedrunning and everything for a while. Um, and uh, I tend to make the things I like into my personality. So, uh, you know, everybody knew that I played a lot of Hades. Uh, or at least like people like close to me and stuff because I mentioned it to them 7,000 times. So... Uh, whenever I would go into like a friend's stream and they were playing Hades and I would just say hi and they were like, oh, no, don't watch. I'm bad. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I just want to, I just like seeing people having fun with uh, the game that I have fun with. <laughs> but yeah, it's just interesting to like see people's like thought processes and how they approach stuff and everything. Like not just with Hades, but just with, with anything, you know, like with this. Um, 
with building stuff. I think these are all the, I hope these are all the same. If not, this is gonna be very hard to differentiate those. Okay, there we go. So now that should make the rest of this a little bit faster, I hope. For those, for these, that's all there is of those. That's all there is. Real ones will know what that quote's from. Or truly anybody who just <laughs> makes an offhand guess based on my, like, two special interests. <laughs> I do, I, I'm looking forward to uh, the next Hades. I'm, I gotta look into if there's been any updates on when that's coming out. I think it's supposed to be soon. Or at least not, not the full version, but the early access version. Um, I don't know exactly how I want to do it yet, because I do want to experience the story as a whole at some point. Like, I want to be able to watch it and... Um, Or, or not watch it, but rather, but uh, play it and like sort of see it uh, and sort of see it as like one one whole thing and experience all the story together. But at the same time, I'm certainly not waiting for <laughs> for the full release. Um, I will be playing that game the moment it comes out, and I just I feel like uh, Super Giant is gonna drop it all of a sudden. Like, they're not going to say, like, all right, the, uh, the, uh, early access is coming out in two weeks at, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time, whatever, you know? I feel like they're just going to straight up drop it out of nowhere. <laughs> it's just going to be like, all right, it's out, go play it. <laughs> um, we'll see. But, uh. So I, I, I'm sure I'll get into the early access right away, but maybe uh, once the full release comes out, I'll start from a fresh file and we'll, we'll play it to experience it all, all together. Oh, hiccup. <laughs> So I need 24 of these little guys. So 36, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 22, 24. Okay. So those are just like outside. Uh, this way, I think. How does this work? Like this, I think. Perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or they just shadow drop it that day, yeah. <laughs> oh, I did it correctly, and then I immediately tried to do it incorrectly right after that. <laughs> this is verifying, you know? It's uh, good practices. <laughs> hmm. I eventually need to get some some better lighting, I think, for for this desk. I've tried a few solutions over time, um, but I just haven't really been happy with any of like the lighting solutions I've tried to get a little more 
a little better uh, visual here. Tried some like overhead like clip-on lights. I have some uh, light stands from another ancient hobby that I was really into for three months uh, <laughs> when I was younger. Um, and I just, and I actually, I really like the look of that one, but like, it's like until I have a place where I can have like a permanent stream set up and everything that's like, that's like where that's all I do uh, at that space. Um, and I can just leave everything set up all the time. That solution, unfortunately, just was not super feasible for me because it was so much set up and breakdown. And I'm just, uh, I'm very much a person who I need things to be set up so I can just go and start. I think like, I honestly think that would be a helpful thing for a lot of people. And I think that's something that we kind of neglect is just making things easier on ourselves. Um, you know, because if all you have to do to go do something, like let's say, let's say you're into crochet, you know, if all you have to do is just go sit down and your stuff is already out, you know, maybe like you have to put it like your, your needle in like a, uh, like a cup or something that you, you keep your stuff in, you know, that's different. But you know, if you, like having to like, the, I, I really think for like hobbies and stuff, especially like being, you know, with the neuro, neuro spicy, neurodivergence and everything. I think for neuro, neurodivergent people, um, it can a lot of the time be even more important to make things just accessible for yourself. Because if I have to go in a closet and like, Again, just using the crochet example, if I have to like go in the closet and I have to like pick up, like I have to go get the yarn out and uh, I have to get all these things that I have, I've put away in cases because I don't have much space and it has to be all put away and then I have to get it all out like at the start, I'm never going to do it. It's just not going to happen. It's too much. It's the, the going from zero to actually doing the the act of like crocheting or streaming whatever it is um just needs to be as easy as possible <laughs> as as quick and as simple as possible and i just haven't haven't found like a lighting solution that works for my situation just yet that sort of fits those needs so we're making do with what does work <laughs> <laughs> I love the aesthetic of the dim desk with glasses and cute flower lamp and the candle and empty candle. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I like. I think there's something uh, to, to kind of what I've got going on too. I just, I don't. I, I think I've decided I want to go a little more simple with this kind of this this sort of thing with my setup and everything, but. Just a little better lighting to help things uh, be a little more readable as well. <laughs> mm. Let's see. That would be a cool place. I can hang out, shop with preset areas for different hobbies where you just pay for your time and supplies and you sit down and just start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing is being able to just start and having everything ready. I actually, I think that sounds like a really cool idea. Just having some place where, um, sort of like a hobby center. My, I don't know if we still have it actually. I remember hearing about it a long time ago, back when like, three D printers and stuff were like really just coming into the zeitgeist. Um, or maybe a little bit after. You know, once they'd become a little bit more affordable. You know. Uh, some towns that have like community spaces and everything for people to go and like print things or build things or they would have like 
volunteers that would show people how to use like programs to 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 work on 3d modeling stuff like that like uh spaces that were generally uh oriented towards like you know more youth activity but are like public you know open places that like people can come and pay like a you know a little fee to come and use and they have all of these tools and, and services that that would not be at their disposal um I remember hearing about one that opened up in my town many, many years back. I don't know if it's still here. I'll have to look into that sometime. I think it's supposed to hang over the edge a little bit. I think that's correct. My old high school did that with 3D printers. Yeah, it's so it's it's really cool hearing about like the some of the uh, the stuff that's available, you know, in whether it be like high schools or just like community centers and stuff like that nowadays, like with like the 3D printers and everything. And I'm sure it's just normal for people who grew up with that now, but it's just like as somebody who. Is, and not that you you don't have to be extremely old to have seen this. It's still a pretty recent technology, but you know, with like 3D printers and stuff when they were first coming out, you know, I was I was old enough that I was already like paying attention to things like that, and and um, it, it's cool to have seen something that is such like a cutting edge technology, or that that is when it releases, like. The idea of 3D printing when it when it came out was very like the idea of being able to print something in th that was not, you know, that was a physical three dimensional thing was so like it was just crazy. Um, and seeing that go from this like cutting edge technology to something that's I wouldn't say readily accessible to people, but something that is, you know, at least available to some communities um, in like public spaces. Like I've even heard of like libraries and stuff that have like 3D um, printers and stuff. Those are probably, I would imagine those are probably more, more affluent areas with that kind of thing, but um still the fact that it's you know that's a possibility at all is really cool um another thing actually recently that i i learned about with um i think these all just basically like panel over all of this uh something i i learned about recently is that um some of like the 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 high schools in my area uh, and the high school that I went to now have uh, eSports clubs, which is just really cool to see um, the inclusivity of, of stuff like that and sort of the development of stuff like that. Um, because, like, I, I mean, regardless of, you know, whether you agree, like, because, <laughs> you know, there's that whole discussion of, you know, are eSports really sport or, you know, whatever, but... I think reg like regardless of that, I think um, things like that that are not just like clubs that other students are running or whatever, but actual like school sanctioned community spaces for people who are in the same who are interested in the same things and and you know are, are passionate about it and everything um, is really cool. Um, you know, I, I even back back when I was in high school, I don't know that I I don't know if I really played video games at all during that kind of time of my life. There was sort of this like break period where there was a lot of things that um, I was interested in. I kind of like fell off the wagon a little bit. And part of that was because, uh, you know, going into high school, um, a lot of my interests you know up until that point were 
funny enough, uh, a lot of the same ones I've come back to today. Um, you know, primarily like, you know, anime, video games, drawing, um, things like that. Um, which were not cool hobbies to have <laughs> back in the day. I was very interested in Japanese music, which was also, this was also before like the boom of like, uh, like K-pop and, and boy bands and BTS and everything. So it was not a cool thing back then. Very much, very much so not. Um, uh, oh, sorry, give me one second. Yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, so, uh, it was, it was, uh, w when I went to middle school from high school, or when I went to high school from middle school, rather, um, you know, I, I sort of, I was like, I was like, nah, I'm not going to be a nerd. I don't want to be a nerd. Uh, I, uh, did not. No, I never got along well with, uh, people from my, uh, middle school, really. Uh, uh was not treated particularly well, uh, by <laughs> some of my classmates. Uh, which is okay, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's middle school. It's not okay, but it's how middle school is. <laughs> um, so that was kind of like a driving decision for me and like getting to high school. And I was like, all right, I, I want to, I want to get along with people. I want to make some friends. I'm not going to be into anime. I'm not going to be a nerd, you know, whatever. Um, when I was in when I was in high school, not you know, sort of not really having the awareness at that age of like, well, if the people like that you're friends with would have made fun of you for being into what you actually were into, you know, maybe not the people that you want to be friends with. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I kind of. Uh, uh, fell out of a lot of hobbies uh and and in my adult life have sort of had like moved back to them and and come back to them so <laughs> i just woke up and now i go back to sleep oh lira i hope you sleep well <laughs> have a good second nap <laughs> oh it's okay i didn't mean that i was like i realized as i was saying this i was like this sounds sad, but I don't mean it as like a sad thing, you know? It's just, like I said, that's just how that time is. I think a lot of people have to deal with that. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make it better, but... Um, it doesn't make it good, rather, but it's just, it is what it is. Uh, middle schoolers are not, <laughs> not always the nicest of people. It's just how it is. You're still developing. You're still learning how to be a person. <laughs> I think... Like this? Question. Yes, there we go. Oh, these are like the... Okay, I was trying to figure out what these little rings were for. What they do. I was just like... They're like the stand for it. Okay. I remember I played Yu-Gi-Oh with my friend at high school and watched anime during lunch. Yeah. And I, like, honestly, like, uh, oh, I didn't put the other thing on it. Um, what? Oh. I also did not put it on that one. <laughs> I, I very much like now uh, respect a lot of the people that I know because you know it's not like it's such a funny thing because it's like it's not like I 
I, I, at least in my memory, like ever really, like I never thought anything bad about people who were into the things that I wanted to be into when I was that age. But self-reflection is hard when you're 15. <laughs> It's not exactly something that we are the most prone to at that age. <laughs> All right, there's baggy one done. That's a sixth of the way through. I'm telling you, we're an hour into stream and we're a sixth of the way done. Well, I guess a fifth if we're only doing one color leaves, assuming they're packaged all like separately so <laughs> i'm telling you i'm turning i can turn a one hour activity into a five hour activity <laughs> it's my specialty all right so we'll just set these aside and try not to push these back maybe out of the way so they don't get mixed in with anything else by accident hmm uh, I know, but still just want to say a few. Oh, I, pre I appreciate it regardless, though. Thank you. Double Salem tonight, indeed. Mm, you remember battery location time? <laughs> I know. One, one hobby that I still want to get into. I have too many things that I want to get into lately, but... I think I've just like realized that like I need to be okay with the idea that like you know maybe I just maybe I just want to try things. That's okay. We don't have to get super into everything we want to try. But I want to try uh, uh, playing Digimon, the Digimon TCG. There's a lot of mechanics in it that really like make it sound very interesting to me um, over some of some other uh, card games. Um, particularly like for those, I know there's like three people in <laughs> North America who play the Digimon TCG, but, um, the like memory gauge system of it is essentially a way of like limiting how many cards people can play and like how many moves you can do. So you don't end up with these like 7,000 cards like combo turns that Yu-Gi-Oh has because <laughs> I was considering getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh for a little while but then the more I looked at it again the more I was like mm, I'm overwhelmed with looking at this game so maybe maybe this one ain't it hmm <laughs> Okay, so... Okay, so now we're building like the, the... the bark of the tree, the base of it. Yu-Gi-Oh! went all in on power creep to sell sets, yeah. It seems that way. It's just there's too many mechanics for me. And, you know, all of the... XYZ... Uh, it, like everything uh I, like truly like the amount of complication i could handle out of the Yu-Gi-Oh game was like the amount it had when it was like airing on four kids in the u.s <laughs> i think they seems like they want you to build like th this doesn't go in here so that's uh yeah i think we build this separately am i using this little baggie first or yeah i've i've you know i think Probably every TCG probably has uh, some some amount of power creep to some degree, but in Yu-Gi-Oh it was just it was too much. <laughs> it's too much for me. I just 
I just want to play Dark Magician and attack your life points directly. I don't want to. I don't want to do these like fourteen combo <laughs> things that you pull from your graveyard and then you put it in your deck and then you discard all of your deck into your outer hemisphere. But that actually like turbo dragon blasts your most powerful monster. But it's no, I can't. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it looks like there's a couple orange pieces that should be in here, so. I'm gonna need this like Lego splitter thing just yet, so that seems like it's more for taking stuff apart. Used to be real into Yu-Gi-Oh! It's been years and I wanted to build another deck, but everything is so complex and not very friendly to beginners anymore. Yeah, that was the same problem I had is I just I need something that's more beginner friendly. <laughs> Which essentially rules out Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh, which are both <laughs> uh, notoriously complicated. I just want something I can get into a little more casually. And Digimon seems... It seems like there's a nice balance of, like, beginner-friendly, but there are, like, complicated mechan... Not complicated, but, like, more advanced mechanics and stuff. Like, there were some decks that people were talking about because all of the decks in Digimon do different things. Like, some of them are more CC-oriented, some of them... Not CC, that's like a... <laughs> using league terms. More like a... Um, like, they either give you memories, some colors, like, restrict your opponent's memories, um, which is like your your energy, essentially, that you use to, to, to play cards. Uh some of them like just are, are sort of like have like brawler sort of are they're just big chunky monsters uh with with a lot of attack like that kind of thing they all have like a specialty and it seems like there's not necessarily like a wrong choice necessarily it's that they all from what i've heard seem to be pretty balanced but some of them are a little bit more um intensive to use than others and like you know of course like there are some things that that might be a little bit better but are more complicated um and so they just there's a little bit of a, a more of a higher skill ceiling and a lower skill floor to them whereas other colors are uh maybe more beginner friendly you know something like you know, going for like a a type of deck that's just like all right, you summon big monsters and you hit real hard with them. Um, it's a little more simple compared to some of the other, like I think the purple is like a color in Digimon where it's like there's a lot of like pulling from like your, like the, the Digimon equivalent of like your graveyard and like using like, like sending monsters to your own graveyard to create special effects and stuff like that. Um, and so, like, purple was one that, like, people were saying, like, maybe don't start with this one, um, if I remember correctly. Please don't take anything I'm saying as gospel. I have a bad memory, and I'm <laughs> not in actually in this hobby at all just yet. I'm just hyper-focused on a bunch of YouTube videos. <laughs> um, those are different. Uh, but yeah, so the idea of, like, being able to get into it and having like easy options to get into but then also being able to have room for advancement um once you are more comfortable is really nice it's, it's like a nice option i think but it's uh, but then it's like if you want to just uh, um but then if you just want to stay at that like casual sort of beginner sort of uh style of decks that's okay too you know because it's like they're still viable. They're just maybe not 
you're maybe going to get outplayed a little more often than by with people using these like more advanced uh, styles of decks, but it doesn't seem like there's like it's not like if you play the uh, more simple colors that you're gonna per you're you're gonna perma lose every time, you know. So that just makes it very appealing to me. But the problem is, it's not a popular game here, <laughs> and I've gone to four different comic book stores, uh, and. Well, uh, one, I actually, I was going to say none of them had it. One did have it, but they didn't have the deck I was looking for. Uh, but the one of them had uh, the packs of the cards, but no decks. But then the uh, the other two just straight up didn't even have the, the decks or the, the, the packs. They were like, yeah, we don't we don't get too many requests for that one. So we haven't brought it in stock yet. <laughs> like, yeah. I was talking to him a little bit and I was like, I'm not surprised to hear that. <laughs> it's not, it's not popular here. I actually didn't even know it existed uh, until I saw it in a, uh, uh, I, I saw like some of the cards for like my favorite characters from when I was younger, like in a, uh, a card shop in, uh, where was it? I think I was in uh, Osaka with a friend who had come to visit and uh she's really into magic the gathering so we were just kind of going and she wanted to see some of like the japanese like card stores and maybe get some like s like some sleeves or something um some stores actually did like have a um i think a couple not not certainly not not all or even most but there, there were one or two stores that I think had some English cards too. It was just a very small section. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we went looking for Magic the Gathering cards and ended up finding... I, I was just wandering while she was looking and saw the Digimon section. I was like, well, huh? I didn't even know this was a thing. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's... These are almost all sorted. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so... Yeah, I think I, I, I tend to overwhelm myself with new hobbies and stuff because I tend to get into stuff with the intention of being very into them because I get very excited about things when I first start them um, and I tend to fall off and I think I just need to change my mindset of like, you know, I'm not going to force myself to stay interested or, or doing something that I've kind of lost some of my my zest for but I think just come up approaching things less with the expectation that I'm going to get really into them and love them so much forever uh, and I need to just you know like I said kind of reframe with the intention of being like well Maybe I'll just do this one thing. Like, maybe I'll just do this one Lego set and I'll never touch Legos again. I don't think I will. I don't think that's the plan. But that's kind of the mindset I want to go into stuff with now. Of Just just do what you're enjoying right now. If you keep enjoying it, keep doing it. If you don't, enjoy something else. It's sort of that, like, I, I think I've just realized I'm more of a more of a jack of all trades kind of person than a, like a jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing. I think I, I think I prefer that. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. 
I just collect Pokemon cards now. Don't even play. I just like the critters. That's cute. I think that's I think that's a good thing, Sarah. <laughs> Big chunky monsters. Big chunky monsters. Affectionate. <laughs> Other TCG like Pokemon is a bit more open to options. Focus on the type as a whole versus needing certain archetypes to functional. Gotcha. I don't know anything about the Pokemon TCG, to be honest. I don't know where it falls in terms of complexity. Or if it has had, uh, like, similar issues with power creep and everything. I still think... I do think the... The, 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 the artificial scarcity of, of the hobby of, like, rare cards and stuff is not my favorite thing. Um... Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I guess you could say this about a lot of things, but I just can't help every time I see a a $1,000 Yu-Gi-Oh card. I'm like, that is two cents worth of paper and ink. This this company is not even... They... <laughs> this is... this this Making this card was not even a thought in their mind. <laughs> so it's just like, sometimes I see that and I'm like, mm, I don't love this aspect of, of, of this particular thing. <laughs> but... That's just me. Having to squint at some of the card text to read Monster Effects is an ideal. Yeah. Yeah, I struggled with that too. It's too much. Too much going on. That was the same reason the uh, the game that I used to get really... That I was I was really into, Omyoji. Um, the effect... Uh, or the effects and the abilities and stuff of the different, like, uh, Shikigami that you could get. Um... We're becoming very complicated. Uh, and it was sort of like every time a new character came out, I had to read an essay to understand what they did. Uh, and that was that that was sort of the point where I started to, to make my exit, where I was like, all right, I've enjoyed this game daily for probably three years straight. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's time. Maybe not three years. I think it was, no, it might've been three years actually. Yeah. Cause I hit a, cause I remember, uh, I hit the thousand day achievement, um, on Omyoji and, uh, which isn't playing for a thousand days straight. It's just playing for a thousand days, <laughs> uh, or, or at the very least logging in for a thousand days. Uh, but yeah, and, and that was a game that brought me a lot of joy for a very long time. And I still like to keep up with uh, the new animations and everything. I'll, I'll go and, and, and look at them every once in a while. 16, 17, so I need... Mm. I think I need some pieces from over here, so let's organize this. But yeah, so I, I uh, it, it was just, you know, eventually I got to a time where I was like, okay, I don't think I'm enjoying this as much as I was before. And I don't want to like, I, I, I was already reaching that like burnout point, but I was like, I don't want to force myself to play this and end up having like kind of tarnishing my memory of like playing this for so long for so many years. Um... Like I wanna, I wanna leave the game while I have still been enjoying it, and like yeah, it's a little bit more sad to leave things that you're still enjoying, but when I can start to feel that kind of waning, it's sort of like all right, I would rather, I would rather have this be something that like has a good impression in my memory still, rather than burning myself out completely and and looking back on on this game and just thinking about how exhausted i made myself over it you know i kind of had the same thing with uh new carnival uh and i i still like to keep up similarly with that with like the new care like the, the ooh, the new characters and the character designs and what's going on to some degree and everything but 
I sort of got to a point where um, I was proficient enough with the gameplay that I, I, this feels like it sounds like a brag, but I don't mean it that way. But I, it's just, you know, you play a game long enough, it's going to happen to everybody. It's not like I was particularly good or anything. I, I was just following guides and doing what other people said worked, and then it worked. But, uh, yeah, it was just like, I, I, once I got to a point where I was starting to feel like a little bit, not bored, but just like it was time to be done, you know, I've, I retired, <laughs> retired from New Carnival. <laughs> Uh, Pokemon TCG also suffers from certain cards going for insane amounts of money. Yeah. Yeah, that one doesn't surprise me. That I, that I would have expected. I think kind of all, all TCGs seem like they're sort of suffering from that to some degree. Although that was another, once again, another appeal about Digimon. There's so many like brown pieces and like just neutral colors right now that I'm like, I'm trying to organize these, but I don't know if that's actually helping. <laughs> They're all so similarly shaped that I'm like, mm, am I going to be able to parse this? <laughs> we'll find out, I suppose. I'm trying to keep everything that was in the separate packet separate, but although I guess that doesn't matter, actually, now that I think about it. It shouldn't, at least, considering we're going from, like, what was in the small bag to what was in the big bag. And we'll probably have to go back. Mm, World of Warcraft TCG went hard. I didn't know there ever was a World of Warcraft TCG. That's interesting. Did that one ever, did that take off much with, like, the, at least when, like, the WoW community and stuff? Were people really interested in it or did it kind of fall by the wayside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, they stopped for some reason don't know why huh yeah like I said I never even heard about it made it into a digital only game ah so funny because I do like I said I do really want to get into trying Digimon but I also like um I am not super into uh like deck builder games like on on PC and everything which is so funny because I want to get into this TCG so bad but then when they made TCGs digital I was like no uh -uh, I don't want that one <laughs> but I'm also a pretty um uh tactile I was trying I was trying to think of the word like tactile and all I could think of was tactical and I was like I'm not a tactical person <laughs> uh but I'm a tactile person like stuff like this that I can actually touch with my hands physical buttons on things this is my this is how you can tell I'm an old man I because I do not like I don't like touch screens I don't like things that don't have buttons um like hundred like 10 out of 10 times if I can get something that has buttons versus something that's all like sleek and has like uh you know all this like digital interface stuff I'll go with the buttons every time I'll go like uh I just have a hard time uh I don't know what it is but just uh keeping track of things like when you have to go into like a menu into another menu and then the the setting for what was a button on this other thing like it's just hard it's hard for me um i've honestly been like more interested in getting back into like sort of like retro technology um uh regardless anyway like i bought some cds i bought quite a few cds while i was in japan of like audio uh dramas and these two pieces are one piece. Hmm. 
I think this is, yeah, this is, it's like two pieces, but it's already sort of connected. Huh. Uh, but yeah, so like, I want to get, I, I want to kind of focus more on getting back into like physical media because I realized like I was playing, like when I was like, you know, getting the, the CDs and stuff in, in Japan and everything. And I got like a, a CD player, a, a little USB CD player for my laptop and everything. And um, there's just something about it that's nicer to me. I like having, I mean, I think to some degree, you know, you you have to have some stuff digital. It's just not feasible in, in, in this day and age <laughs> to go full physical media. But I think I really do prefer, um, I, I prefer it. <laughs> I like digital just because everyone can carry their whole collection on their phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I get that. And it, there's certainly a lot that's more convenient about it. Um, I think there's also a lot that's less convenient about it too. <laughs> <laughs> but in general, for, for things like that, I do think, yeah, the, the convenience makes sense. Um, but things like, uh, you know, like I'm not I'm not trying to convert all of my music collection to CDs and, you know, playing it on a CD player every day. But um, it's sort of like the whole thing of like, um, like how a lot of media, like with like, uh, you know, streaming services or Amazon or whatever, you know, like on, on Amazon, I, I think you can like buy a movie, but then it's only on Amazon. And if, you know, obviously this is unlikely to happen some anytime soon, but one day, uh, you know, Amazon is, Amazon might shut down. Something might happen. Uh, well, something's go something's gonna happen eventually. <laughs> um, you know, Facebook when I was in high school seemed like a this monolith that could not be, you know, like it was never gonna go away. The idea of like Facebook not being like the place that everybody talked and connected and everything was 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 like, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, now if you look where Facebook is today, you know, everything hits a stumbling point sometime or another. And uh, so just the, the idea that of having all of your things and and just something to me that about the idea of like owning what you own and having it and being able to, to touch it and feel it and hold it is... is Something that I've realized is important to me over the years. So I'm kind of trying to, like I said, not revert all of my stuff to physical media, but trying not, to, I try not to uh, get too into digital media for the most part. Facebook Marketplace still goes hard, though. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. That's maybe a little bit of a flawed comparison, considering, you know, the company behind Facebook with Meta and everything is still going pretty strong. Um. <laughs> okay, I think that's all the organizing. I probably spent way more time just organizing all of this than I needed to, but it probably would have been faster to stop organizing like 10 minutes ago, but it's just satisfying. I don't mind. Okay, so we have these two. And... Here. It's already happening. Whole sections of paid content have been removed from services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was kind of something I like. I don't want to make it sound like I was like, I'm like, oh, well, I was ahead of the curve. But I think a lot of people were worried about that to some degree. 
before that ever started happening and then it's like when it started happening it's like yep well that's I hoped it wouldn't happen but it's kind of what I thought <laughs> um, oh wait is that supposed to like hang over the edge I think I put that wrong spot I have similar feelings towards VHS media. My family used to have a massive collection that I want to rebuild. Yeah, luckily, um, uh, both luckily and unluckily for a variety of reasons. Uh, my family is a little bit, uh, wait, huh? Hold on. Oh, I did this backwards. Confused. Um. Oh, I also did this. Okay, I'm doing stuff wrong. Let me see if I can figure out how to use this, even though I haven't read any instructions on it. <laughs> hey, that was so fancy. I don't know if that was even on screen. <laughs> but it worked. Uh, but yeah, luckily my, my, <laughs> my family is, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, we don't, we have a hard time throwing stuff away and that's a habit I've had to try and break, uh, in my, in my adulthood. Um, but so a lot of, a lot of the VHSs and stuff we had from like the 2000s, we might even still have like an old VHS, like camcorder. I'm not sure. But, uh, back in my day, we had to take apart Legos purely with our fingernails. Yeah, <laughs> I probably would actually, but it is kind of nice because I don't have uh, any gel polish on my nails right now other than uh, one one nail. <laughs> and uh, my nails are not super weak, but not the strongest either. So I don't want to break them. It is a helpful little piece they added in. Use maybe one of them. Yeah, there's just something about di physical media that gives me sparks joy. <laughs> teeth, please don't use your teeth. <laughs> I have such sensitive teeth, and it makes it makes them. <laughs> It makes them hurt when even when hearing people even talk about stuff like that. It's like when people are like when people crunch on ice. That is anti ASMR for me. ASHR, autonomous sensory horrifying response. That's that's the that's the response I get from ice crunching. <laughs> I used paper clips, Legos, so I broke my nails. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> I need one. This, this, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the thing that amazes me with, with, with like things like Legos is the fact that there are people who there, like there was a comment I saw from somebody uh, when I was looking up stuff about Legos earlier and I saw I, I truly never get into anything without <laughs> like a full day of research beforehand um, uh, at, a, at a minimum. But uh, I saw somebody that was talking about how he'll usually, like, he was saying that he'll usually build, like, a Lego set, and then he'll take it apart, and then he'll rebuild it, but without the instructions, and uh, he'll, like, do stuff to, like, make it, make it his own. And, like, the idea of being able to, like, look at these pieces, or having, like, sets of pieces, and being able to just think about, like, well, 
if I combine like, you know, these things and put it here and I can modify this and everything, my brain doesn't work like that. So that's always a truly fascinating and impressive thing to me. The skill to be able to just like, like, um, sort of improvise things. Improv in all areas is a skill I have negative aptitude at. <laughs> Connects as a kid, just jamming stuff together. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking back on my Lego habits is making me realize my oral fixation has been around for a very long time. I used to chew on those so much. <laughs> I don't, I never, I didn't chew on things as a kid or anything, but as a, as a kid a lot, early, early signs of neurodivergence. <laughs> I was, I touched everything. I would walk through stores. I touched everything that looked like it was nice to touch. I would walk through stores and like anytime we were walking by like towels or walking through like a clothing section or um, stuffed animals or anything, you know, I wasn't actually really interested in any of these things, but I would just walk by them and I would just like, I would just have my hand out and I would just like, but like, like brush it like on the items on, on the shelf as I walked by. <laughs> and sometimes if I found something that was like nice to touch, I would like stay there and just like, just feel it for a, for a few seconds. And then I'd continue on my way. <laughs> I would touch meat through plastic at the grocery store. It sounds, that sounds gross to me now, but as a child, I think I would have, I, I pro maybe did do that to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this how I'm finding out that me touching everything is yet another neurodivergent thing? It's the sensory input, you know? I, uh, it was a uh, self soothing, you know? <laughs> I think that's that like base piece done. which is very easy to find. Hmm. It's called a mock, my own creation. Yeah, I think that's a really, it's a very impressive skill to me. Piece of 
this, but maybe not. Maybe I did not. Where is this other... Sorry, I'm having trouble finding a piece. Just a second. This looks like it's too tall, but I can't find... I can't find the other piece for this. Because I don't think it's this one. doesn't seem correct. Close. I suppose. Let me give me a second to flip through here and make sure. Let's see if these other kind of more chunky boy pieces are used later. Yeah, no, it's not these ones. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I understand. I was like, th these were a couple of pieces that were confusing me earlier, because I thought this was two pieces, but there's like a weird connection, but it's like a hinge. Advanced Lego. Hmm. Interesting, but unfortunately not what I'm looking for. And I don't think I've, like, dropped any pieces or anything. We haven't... we haven't opened the next bag yet, have we? That's not the... the intention here, is it? the wrong piece anywhere, did I? I don't believe so. This goes here. Oh, I'm a fool. Okay, it's I lined these pieces up too well. <laughs> so I thought it was one I thought that was like one brick of pieces. Crisis averted. I was, I was, 
just on the cusp of starting to get a little stressed and I was like that is the opposite part this is, that is the opposite of what was supposed to happen here <laughs> oh okay okay Christ the party we're okay hmm And this goes on to the... I realize I keep like doing this thing where I grab the pieces and I'm like, alright, these go together, so let's put them together. And then I do this. I need to be here. <laughs> Can't see them otherwise. Hmm. Funnily enough, I got a set recently that was missing a piece. It's rare, but it can't happen. <laughs> the idea of getting a Lego set that is missing a piece, but not having any way to confirm that and just thinking like maybe you lost it or you can't find it is awful. <laughs> okay, so we're on page 25. How many pages are there? There are uh, about roughly, yeah, about 75, about 75 pages. So about a third of the way there. We'll do what we can tonight. It's just like, like things like this, I guess, where it's like you build up all of these pieces here. So, you, and then you have like this funky piece that like slots perfectly into them. And then just, well, if I can line it up correctly, there we go. But it's just like the idea of like being able to think of things like this. Cause I'm sure these colors, these are all these colors for a reason. Um, but the idea of being able to like look at these pieces and think about like this and being able to like envision that this is how they go together um like in your mind and just knowing like all of the having the knowledge like of the legos too of of being able to know like okay these two pieces if i stack them up they'll equal the distance that i need for or the width that i need for this other piece to fit correctly It's impressive. Hmm. I think the trick is to start with the big parts like the art and work back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense too. Probably actually makes much more sense, but regardless, I still think it's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> also, just a heads up, I think I'm going to do a couple more pages and then I'm going to go take a little snack break uh so i'll go grab a just a little something to eat just recharge so if you all want to get ready to go grab a snack in a couple minutes with me as well please feel free plus you know just good to get up and walk around for a second But I mean, I think that, that that's sort of my problem, <laughs> Pina, like, uh, is just like things like that sort of thing. Like the idea of like working backwards from like bigger pieces and stuff. It does like the way my brain works. That's just like, that didn't even occur to me. Did not even think about that. <laughs> Okay, so we go here. 
think another sort of like arts and craft project that I want to do on stream eventually is uh um yeah see it's just like these pieces like in the shadow right here it's just like unreadable well, there's some better lighting so so that's a little easier to see but another uh project that I want to work on eventually is I have a bunch of stuff from Japan I have like um like tip like uh like tickets from like going into places or like little uh um, like fortunes that I got from shrines and stuff and I want to make a big scrapbook of all of it because um, my grandparents had uh, scrapbooks hanging around in their house um, with stuff from like when they were very young and everything too and it was such a cool thing to be I remember as a kid I I, I, uh, I would go through them a lot uh, just because it always like you know it kind of baffled it, it, it's like it's sort of like a, a little bit of like learning about like your like your parents when they were you know youngins when they were the youth and stuff and being like wait huh you are <laughs> it's like uh as a kid i was like amazed by like that all of these pictures were of my you know elderly quiet life grandparents um and I just like the idea of having something like that that I can sort of carry with me that also that, that still has like all those like memories and everything in it. I think I this is sort of a topic I always uh, struggle with a little bit because I I always want to like I, I I think it's become more important to me to learn to not necessarily need um a picture to remember everything you know like a lot of the times when i'm going places like if i'm going somewhere that's like normally like a big photo place or something that people like take a lot of pictures of to try and remember it or because it's special or whatever I, there's nothing wrong with that i just want to preface with that but for me i i've realized that i want to learn to like enjoy things and enjoy the experience of them enjoy the memory of them without necessarily having like you know 74 pictures of of the same thing from different angles um or concerts you know um and being okay with the fact that like yeah i'm gonna forget some of the details i might forget something entirely um and being okay with that and realizing that's just sort of a part of life you know and just it's okay if i forget things as long as i'm enjoying them while they're happening that's okay <laughs> um because i i've just realized i enjoy things much more when i'm not you know trying to make sure i remember them okay i actually need one of these now i need two of these okay um, so, I, 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 like, a lot of my, like, mementos and stuff, I have a couple of photos, and I actually limited my, like, a lot of the photos that I took. Yeah, I took a bunch of photos on my, my cell phone and stuff of, of places that I went, but, um, for stuff that I really wanted to... Stuff that I... Sorry, I had to try and figure something out. <laughs> but for stuff that was like... Like the first time I went to my apartment, um, I, I actually... I brought a Polaroid camera with me to Japan um, and things like that. The first time I went to the school I was studying at, um, I took a Polaroid of it. First time I went to my apartment, I took a Polaroid of it. So I have maybe like 10 or 12 polaroids of thing of just like moments that were important to me and and i think polaroids are nice because for me it feels like it captures a moment you know there's not a lot of detail in a polaroid the pictures are kind of faded they're kind of fuzzy 
but it lets me look at them and instead of trying to remember details, I remember how things felt. Um, and I remember the way that I felt when I was taking that picture and that it feels like it's more of a capturing of a time to me rather than framing a specific visual. Um, yeah, so like I said, I like I said, I've been trying to get back into physical media and uh, pol and getting a Polaroid camera was a big one for me. Um, especially because, you know, then you're limited. You kind of have to, you know, you don't have unlimited photos you can take. There have even actually been moments where I've considered uh, switching back from uh, uh, having a smartphone to having a flip phone. I think there are a lot of things, and I, this is fully just for me. This is personal <laughs> stuff more so than my reflections of whether things are, are right or wrong, you know. Um, do what's, do what's best for you. But for me, um, I've realized... Uh, I don't know that I love the constant access to everything that smartphones provide. And I don't know if I think that it's a healthy thing for me. Sorry, let me figure out this piece real quick. This, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're building, we're building. We got something here. Let me, let me give you guys a little up close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we got that. Oh, we got the base. Do, 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 do. This is so satisfying. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like all, pretty much every place that I I went and everything, you know, I think there is something to be said of taking pictures for other people too. You know, there are some things that like, you know, that friends and, and family of mine just just you know they they, they visit uh, i had plenty of people who visited but there's just there's only so much they're going to be able to see so i think there's something to be said for being able to take you know pictures of all kinds of stuff all the time and being able to share those so easily with people that you you care about and you want to share stuff with but like if i was going somewhere that was kind of just more for me i would i would take maybe like one or two pictures. Um, that was it. <laughs> and I would try to just be happy with that. Um, I tried to use I try to use photos as more of a way to remember an experience than remembering specifics. You know, I you know I don't I don't necessarily care that I remember exactly what the Kamakura Buddha statue looks like. Um, but I care that I remember the overall experience and feeling of going there, you know? Um, that, that I guess that's probably the most succinct way that I can put it. I'm not a photo moment person, but it turns out having a camera on the phone means not, I'm an opportunist photographer. <laughs> I don't take a ton of photos, but I do have something called aphantasia, which means that I can't, actually cannot visualize images in my mind. So sometimes I definitely have to take a picture. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, I, I just want to be very clear. This is all just in relation to me. This is not any judgments about what other people do, what other people choose to do, what's right for them. I think it's, uh, you know, I think uh, we all kind of just have to figure that out for ourselves. But... Um, I do want to talk a little bit more about the, I just like the, uh, the idea of like constant access to things. I think I actually, I have more to say on that, but I need a little snacky first. <laughs> so I'm going to go get a snack. Um, I might bring it back. I'll probably maybe have some Oreos on, on, on screen or something. I'm just hang out for a couple minutes while I, while I refuel. Uh, but uh, we're just gonna go over to my BRB screen, uh, real quick. 
and I will see you all in just a moment. We will continue this. And I will see you in a moment.
followed so easy Hello, hello, we're back. We're back, we're back, we're back. <laughs> I was just gonna get like a little snack, like some cookies or something, but my stomach's been a little sensitive tonight with, uh, even just lately with like too many sweets. It's the age, <laughs> it's the entropy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a little bit more like a mealtime break. It's got a little, uh, a little pot pie. I know it's not, like, aesthetic, but <laughs> sometimes we gotta eat and it's not aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, I just got that and I got myself a little, uh, tangerine. I don't, I don't know what these are, actually. <laughs> tangerine? Question mark? I just know they're good. And they're kind of healthy, so... I be trying, be trying to take care of myself more lately. <laughs> Any food that actually looks like food and not processed to hell is a vibe. <laughs> I do think about that every once in a while, how like so many of the things that, and I'm, I don't mean this in like a, to, to like a judgmental sort of way. I eat. I eat like a little garbage feasting raccoon. I don't I don't eat very healthy. <laughs> so this is this comes with no judgment. Uh but I I think sometimes about how I it feels like a lot of our food nowadays like like a lot of the things we eat would not even be recognizable as food like 200, 300, 400 years ago. Like if you think, like, a lot of, I mean, like, you know, obviously people were able to cook and everything, like, back then, like, you know, it was just different, different methods and everything. But I just think about the fact that, like, um, like, so, like I said, like, so many of the things that we eat nowadays just, uh, don't, don't have any resemblance to the food they started as. <laughs> Mm. 
If you, yeah, 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 yeah. It's exactly like that curse. If you fed a medieval peasant a flaming hot Cheeto, he would die. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what was the other? I remember there was a post before that was like, uh, if you, if you gave, uh, the amount of, uh, if you gave like a Victorian orphan a flavor blast, like the amount of flavor blasted uh, dust on a single Dorito uh, would be enough to wipe out a Victorian or like child, something like that. That's <laughs> such a funny post. If you gave Queen Cleopatra a cool ranch Dorito, she would have you slain. <laughs> Not my Queen Cleopatra. <laughs> no, I truly do want... It's one of those things where I do wonder... If we've, like... Optimized for deliciousness... <laughs> over the years. Um, or if it's just a matter of tastes having changed. Because obviously, like, like, you know, countries obviously all have different... Flavors and dishes and stuff that all are, appeal to them differently. Um, it may not appeal to people from other places. Um, but I do wonder if that's like how, like, like obviously there's not, you know, one optimization for deliciousness. <laughs> but I do wonder if just as a general trend, if we figured out what works better over time. Because like, you know, a, a lot of things have developed very quickly in the past, uh, probably half century century and so like uh, I do wonder if you took like modern day food back to somebody who was in like the the 1700s the 1800s where you know the food the preparation the taste the flavors and everything were all very different it's like would they like it you know and maybe they would have to adjust to it were would it be like the idea of trying something from a place that shares a very different culinary palette from where you come from you know i think there might be a little bit of column a a little bit of column b <laughs> more extreme cheese flavor in one dorito than, than uh an entire victorian noble's lifetime <laughs> A historical gastronomist. That, I mean, there has, like, there has to be somebody who knows about those kinds of things, right? <laughs> it's always so funny hearing about people who are in, like, a really obscure career field like that. Because it's just sort of like, it's such an interesting like specific thing just things like that you know H having knowledge about like what the effects of like medieval food was on like the gut biome you know like that kind of thing there has to be one person in the world who knows a lot about that for their career and I want to know how that person got there I want to know the turns and twists they took in life to become an expert in medieval uh, gut biomes. <laughs> Maybe not that one. Maybe I don't need to know that much about that one. <laughs> I'm a little too easily grossed out, maybe. <laughs> but stuff like that, you know. We can ban a lot of unhealthy stuff in the U.S., but choose not to, whereas European countries and even Russia does. Yeah. I mean, I think there's... There's sort of an interesting conversation, I think, around that, where... Like... 
uh, I know there was, when I was very, very young, this was like, I was like in elementary school, I remember there were discussions about like soda bans and limits on like soda size and stuff, because this was sort of during like the peak of like the supersized McDonald's like controversies and stuff like that. Um, and it's just sort of an interesting discussion as to like some of these foods are like and some of these like things that, like places are selling are very unhealthy they are like detrimental to people's health not in a like poisonous kind of way but just in a or, or toxic necessarily or anything but just in a way that's irresponsible um not even for people to buy necessarily but for these corporations to sell and it's like well should people be allowed to make that decision for themselves or is there sort of a threshold where at some point you know you need like a government or government body or something to step in and say hey this is too much <laughs> this is not you are you know actively like having negative effects on ne negative health effects on people who encourage your establishment and you are encouraging this behavior with it's it's there's and i don't think there's a right or wrong answer so i think there is stuff like that like where i think things like that that come into play like the whole like i think there's this could be like a, a, a myth or something so excuse me if i'm incorrect on this but like um I believe one of the like it's like red food dye number five or something like that um significantly less fun than mambo number five but a lot of places like d just straight up i think it's like not legal to to use at all in like uh the eu whereas in like the us it's still it's still allowed but there's like things like uh that that, that come along with it like increased uh prevalence of like adhd i think i think it tends to like uh has like tan truly tangible effects tan like tangible um like things that that that, that, con that are connected to it and that that i i i think i am fully on on the side of like okay there's like negative health effects that are strongly correlated with with these things like that that at that point yeah dude get rid of it throw it out put it in the trash but things that are just unhealthy and being sold in large portions is is a harder line to to, to toe i think mm, red 40 yellow five okay got it got it i was getting my my numbers mixed up <laughs> We banned caffeine powder because no one would read the instructions. Yeah, that's sort of the problem is like figuring out the, the threshold for that kind of thing of how much or how much responsibility do we put on consumers versus how much do we put on the corporations to be responsible um, to not encourage these um, detrimental behaviors because i mean e even things like like soda and, and stuff do like some of these things like a, again i'm not educated so please do not <laughs> uh, this is truly just what i've read and my opinions based on that don't take it as any sort of educated uh opinions necessarily but from what i've seen i feel like uh a lot of foods that are unhealthy obviously we're eating them so much because there are addictive qualities to them they taste very good we, you know they gives gives us those those good chemical releases in our brain makes us want them more and there's there's an element of personal responsibility absolutely for 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 that kind of thing but then if you if you see like some of these other places that have cultures with sort of a stronger emphasis on personal responsibility um and which which you know was not a good thing or a bad thing every every culture just has different values 
uh, and, and some place more and more emphasis on that. But a lot of places that have more emphasis on that still like, like when I was in Japan, very strong, um, per, like personal responsibility emphasis, in, in my opinion, within a lot of the, the, the values and the culture that I felt like I experienced. Where somewhere like America, maybe not as as strong value in, in, in general culture. But like looking at like you know, just again, kind of going off of like soda sizes as, as an easy example. Soda sizes in Japan. This is like a large, <laughs> this is not a large, but this is, would be like a normal amount of soda. I think for, for people to drink, like with like a full dinner, like, and for me, like if I was like eat, like having like a meal and I was out in a restaurant or something, this, like when I would get like this amount of soda, with no no refills i was like i'm so thirsty <laughs> um so uh, but so like kind of continuing for off the, the the whole like thing like that where they have this culture that that has a little bit more of a personal responsibility value to it but they also like don't ha like have this 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 issue of like overconsumption with things like soda like we do um so it's it's a very difficult and nuanced topic i think um but it's an interesting one i think at least the thing that bothers me to no end is companies are allowed to cheat so much with nutrition labels i was just talking with a family member about this the other day about like nutrition labels where like ramen like with uh like instant ramen if you look at the packets i don't know anybody who does not eat a full packet of of instant ramen just like the you know little 50 cent packets that's a that's one meal on if you look at the nutrition label uh i think it's like i think one serving is like 30 percent of your daily sodium or something like that but one packet is not one serving. They list the nutrition as two servings. Um, so that's actually, so there, it, it feels like sort of a deception. And I mean, if you carefully read the nutrition label, that's well, fairly obvious, but not everybody does. So the idea that you would just like assume that, that that's one serving of food, you look at it, you see that's 30% of your daily sodium. All right, sure, that's fine. It's kind of a lot, but it's, but then when you realize that's not 30%, one packet of instant ramen is like 60%, 70% of your daily sodium. That's probably worse for you. <laughs> um, and be, and the fact that they're able to like hide that through that sort of obfuscation on food labels kind of bothers me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean that was like the only one, but... That was just uh, what came up in conversation with me the other day. <laughs> uh, to break up sugar by using different sugars. So sugar isn't listed as the first ingredient. Yeah. Do you visit any American style restaurants in Japan? Uh, where you can buy president themed burgers? Um, nowhere specifically that was like... Uh, oh... Uh, yeah, nowhere specifically that was like serving like um like Japanese style American food, but I had like you know of course a lot of like American like fast food places like like places that we have like fast food places that we have in America. I also had over there, and there were some differences. Like, um, it was so funny because I went to uh, Okinawa at one point, and A and W, uh, if I remember correctly, is like a huge franchise in Okinawa. But they, uh, from, from, uh, like our tour guide was, was talking to us a little bit. And that was sort of one of our final things as we were going to like an A&W for, for like, uh, dinner before we headed back to, to catch a plane. Um, but the, the, uh, it, it was so funny talking to our tour guide because she was sort of asking about like, Oh, do you guys have A and W a lot in the U.S. or do you guys eat this this a lot or or whatever? And um, 
there was it, it sort of felt like there was this perception that it was like a very American thing to do to go to A and W. Um, at least, it, and it might be in other regions. And but for for me and a lot of the people that I was with, who were all, all from uh, uh, regions that do not have A and W restaurants, we were like, "This is the first time I've been to an A and W." <laughs> in Japan <laughs> so this is uh, kind of a funny thing <laughs> I think for that like particular trip I was not um, I'm gonna save the rest of that for a bit uh haven't I'll probably finish that after stream but um yeah so I, I think for that like particular trip I was not super on the lookout for like American st style uh, uh uh or Japanese style American food but now like it's a very interesting idea I don't know that I ever really considered it um and I would I would love to try it like if and when I have the chance to go back Mm, okay, so let's see what we can find. So I need this piece. I need this piece. Hmm. Ramen is nice as someone on testosterone blockers because it satisfies my salt cravings. Uh, uh, t -t 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 -t. you know what's funny? Tastes less than other people, and ramen doesn't seem as salty as it actually is to me. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, that's good that it works. That it works out <laughs> for you with the uh, the salt cravings and everything. Um, yeah, I think like. I actually, and I do prefer like the full, like the flavor of using like a full packet, but like just mentally, I have such a hard time like knowing I'm, I'm having that much sodium because <laughs> I, I probably already have a little bit higher sodium levels than I should. I don't know that for sure, but that, that would be my guess. Um, maybe not as, as much as I, I, I used to. Um, I still eat, I still eat fairly unhealthy. I just eat less than I used to. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I, I, I usually will use like half of the, uh, half of the packet instead. And I'll actually add like some MSG to kind of make up for the rest of the flavor nowadays. Um, and I'll, then you add like an egg, you add some cheese. It's so good. It's delicious. Mmm. I wouldn't have considered it either. I've just been seeing a lot of uniquely themed Japanese restaurants lately. Yeah, I think I actually, it, I think I saw a post about some sort of like, I don't know if there was some viral post or something that maybe, maybe you had seen recently too, but I think in like the last few days I saw a post about some like American style Japanese re or Japanese style American restaurant. Um, in Japan, and so I'm, I'm definitely very interested in trying trying that when I go back. Oh my gosh, there was this one place that I went to. It was kind of along these lines. It was like a, you know the 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 like big fluffy thick like souffle pancakes that went viral uh, quite a few years ago. Um, I went to a place that served those in uh, I think it was in Shibuya. Um, and they also had like, they had, it was very American core, like food. It was like, uh, um, I don't know if they had this exactly, but it was stuff like, like dumpling, like dumplings and like, uh, um, steak and mashed potatoes, that kind of, that kind of thing. But it was a very cute little like nook kind of place. Um, and one of my friends had actually recommended it to me who had lived in Japan prior uh, but, uh, apparently there was some sort of, like, secret 
there's some sort of like the I guess the bathroom has some sort of like secret entrance through like a bookcase that they had and I didn't know that and I never I never went to the restroom while I was there so I was like my friend told me about it later and I was like oh, I need to go back that sounds so fun <laughs> of these okay all right Taco Bell just opened here too they tried to make a big deal of it but there's no reason to go not cheap and there's no Baja <gasps> no Baja Blast what the heck I actually there was I went to a taco I went to Taco Bell in Japan too and I don't think they had Baja Blast either <laughs> They're, they're fry, they're like nacho fry, like a, um, what did you call it? Like the, the, I think like nacho fries bel grande, uh, was like, it was, it was so good though. It was honestly, it was much better. <laughs> it was better than any time I've had it in the U.S. But it was funny because there were some times where I went to Taco Bell, like I didn't go there often. I tried not to like, you know, make too much of a habit of going to places like that while I was there but um yeah that should be like that um but every time I went there I sort of like Taco Bell for like the junk food cravings and so sometimes I would go and it was almost like too well made it was too well prepared and I was like it's not hitting the Taco Bell spot because it's too good. <laughs> <laughs> Tried Carl's Jr. because I love drink refills. I really enjoy Carl's Jr. I think mostly because they they here they came out with a uh, vegetarian burger a while back. Uh, but I like with all the Beyond Meat and stuff when that was first really getting hitting the scene. Um, and it, it, it was, it's truly one of like the best, like fake burgers. It's like absolute garbage for you. It has to be terrible for you, <laughs> but that's not what I'm eating it for. It's delicious. Mm. Legit, the first thing I did with the car was go to Taco Bell at 2 a.m. <laughs> How far over is that supposed to be? Ah, further over than I put it. Hold on, I have a tool for this. All right. It didn't work as well that time, but it worked. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was, uh, I was looking at the, uh, I was sort of like checking things out from the, uh, the VOD from yesterday to, to see how my setup and stuff was, was working and everything. And I noticed two things. One, my laugh is sort of like, and I've always known this about myself, but like, my laugh is so like sonic, it like peaks the, or not like sonic, but it's like very like sudden. Like a lot of the times when I laugh, it's not like a drawn out thing. It's like a very like quick like, <laughs> uh, and it's very loud in comparison to what I'm saying sometimes. And it like peaks the mic. <laughs> uh, and then I notice also, um, I've talked about this before with like how I, I've sort of trained my voice to sound different than it does, than it would naturally necessarily just because I, I prefer the way it sounds when they talk like this um but uh I did realize I there's a gap there's a gap in my voice training and it's specifically with my ums <laughs> because I'll be talking in sort of the you know my my sort of voice that I prefer and I'll be here and my my I don't know if I can do it on purpose but I'll try but my tone will be like up here and I'll be speaking like, you know, with 
to trying to be to keep it lighter and everything and then i'll go um and it's like suddenly it gets like very like <laughs> it's like it goes from like uh the i can't use like up and down because that's a but it'll go from like here and it'll shoot down here and then it'll come right back <laughs> So it's just very funny with like to be talking and then like listening and hearing me go like talking, 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 uh, talking, talking, talking. <laughs> it goes from library doing to emo 17 year old boy. <laughs> uh. What happens if I steal a Lego? Please. Please, puppy, please, no. <laughs> I need them. Making sure I didn't miss any pieces. All right, all right, all right, all right. Mm, did you ever watch that Rise clip I sent you? I did. I did watch that. <laughs> the Rise, yeah, the Rise old shenanigans are wild. Oh my gosh! Actually, sorry, niche leak posting for a moment, but uh, uh, I was playing Bard in Arams the other day. Um. And there's just a few people, there's like some champions ults who are just like hard for me to use. Like they just, they're not like general use. They're very specific timings. Like Briar ult, you can kind of use whenever you want. You can hit a full HP, you can hit a low HP person. It doesn't, you can use it to kind of assassinate like one person. You can go into a group fight and get a get big CC off. But there are some champions like, like Kindred, uh, um, Bard, Rise, who have like very situational ults. And there was a Pike that was just going off. Like it was sort of that rule of Pike in Arams. You get a Pike on your team and they hit like a paper bag. The enemy team gets a Pike and they're going 24 to, t to 2 by 3 minutes. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, so this this like pike was like going in on our team and I uh, uh, managed to land a bard ult on on uh, pike like while he was in the middle of his ult uh, and so he was like literally mid-air about to assassinate somebody and so I held and I think what I did was I held my Q because he was right next to a wall and I stunned him it was so that was truly I will never use a the Bard's ult better than I did in that moment. <laughs> Bard and Jarvan are in the category of I'm helping ults where you can hurt the team if you mess up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I've done that plenty of times with Bard. Hmm. Bar, uh, like if Rise is best played as a mad scientist, Bard is best played by a toddler who's gone through the eternal torment cube. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> this is so funny looking all so far. I'm just like. I know this is going to turn into a tree. I believe. <laughs> but I don't I don't know that I see it yet. <laughs> I see I see a lot of brown. I, I that I get. Ooh. Something wasn't clicked in all the way. But <laughs> hmm. 
need one of these. I need two more of these. Need. Oh wait, hold on. I forgot to put. I was supposed to put this on somewhere that I did not. Okay, so this way, this way. Like this? Question mark. Hmm. I think I'm gonna let Mr. Sandman take me away. Y'all have a good night. Please the rest well. Thank you for coming and stopping by. <laughs> oh, okay, I understand. I see, I see, I see. Alright, alright, alright. Once again, I'm plopping stuff together off camera. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now we move on. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so back to this. We need one of these. We need one of these. We need two of these. And we need one of these. We need one of these. We need one of these. And finally one of these. get this piece put together and then a little bit more snacking still still a little hungry still a little hungry mm -hmm. well I don't know that I finished my thought about like my my scrapbook and stuff yet so I haven't been able to find like a scrapbook that I'm happy with yet but once I do have one I do wanna I want to put one together. And that I think is going to be an on-stream activity too, just because it'll be easy and and nice for me at least. I hope you guys have fun too. Maybe listening to some of the some stories about places that I was able to, I was I was lucky enough to have the chance to go to. We'll see. I just have to find a uh, a scrapbook that I'm happy with the uh, aesthetic of enough to uh, to put everything into. I have a few like notebooks and stuff that I considered that I, I like the aesthetic of, but I think I want something like chunky and sturdy, you know, something that's gonna last. Because I was originally just gonna go get like, you know, see if Walmart or something had some like $15 something or other to, that I could just put everything in and I was kind of just thinking about it as like a vehicle for what I was putting in it but the more I thought about it the more I was like well this is something I want to last and I want it to be kind of special so I think I want to save up and get something nice to put it all in nothing crazy expensive or anything I just you know just 
just uh you know something that's got like all the, the like acid free paper and uh spilt a little more sturdy etc okay i need one of these little swivelly boys experience at all well, i appreciate it i just like i know <laughs> you know the whole like stereotype of like study abroad <laughs> people like come at, going on like a study abroad trip and then they come home and that's all they talk about for the next 17 years i just like <laughs> i don't want to be that person but unfortunately <laughs> There's that one. Need two more of these swivelly boys. There's one here, one here. yet <laughs> hoping i can visit another country at some point for this i've ever been on a cruise ship to the bermuda you want a cruise ship to the bermuda triangle wild how does this work did i do the oh maybe i did these in the wrong direction yeah i must have should be better. It's all coming together. It's all coming back to you. What was that a slogan for? That was for like a... Like a retro uh, a cartoon channel, like, I think. A retro cartoon programming? Uh, when I, then that's like stuff that was retro when I was young, like, uh, Johnny Quest and stuff. I think it was, what was it called? Boomerang. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boomerang. It's all coming back to you. That was like one thing I was really happy about with that trip actually wasn't wasn't even necessarily me like you know be like obviously you know I was very glad and very lucky that I was able to go but I was honestly kind of more glad that like when my family was able to come to visit because um one of my siblings that is a little bit younger uh significantly younger than me uh, was able to go, and I just think being able to go abroad um, uh, as not a child, but as as uh, a younger person or as an adolescent, um, I think is obviously like many people just don't have the means to do that. That's a, like, it's just when, when I was younger, like my family, absolutely not, absolutely could not have done that. Um, but you know, situations have changed and, and luckily like she was able to come and see like a whole new place. And she does, she doesn't really have like any, like 
uh, cultural or like topical interest in like any like Japanese stuff really. She's not into like anime or manga or Japanese music or anything like that. Um, but it's I think it's still just nice to be able to step out of your own worldview. And the younger you do that, I think the more impactful it can be sooner. So I was I was very very happy that she was able to 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 get out and see a little bit more. These go on the outside. Incredible experience when I was young when we took that trip. Probably didn't appreciate it as much as I would now, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's always hard when you take, like, trips like that when you're younger. And then when you're older, you're, like, thinking about all of the... Or just even, think, like, things that you've done or whatever, you know? When you do them as, as kids, then when you're older, you're like, Damn, I wish I could do that now. I'd appreciate it way more. <laughs> well, of course, I put that on the one set that I shouldn't have. funny it does seem like there was uh just going back to the <laughs> talk about the cost of legos <laughs> uh just because it like I, was just, I don't mean to like complain about it I just, i'm curious about the topic of it and everything because i saw um like on a lot of the forums and stuff it didn't seem like people were like really aggravated or upset by like current pricing or anything because there were a lot of people that were saying like um that lego in particular compared to some of the competition has like extremely high quality like uh barriers uh very good like um not necessarily like research and development necessarily i don't know if that's that's the term that i would use but very good like and very um proficient sort of like back end behind like the toy sets between behind like designing them and everything i guess that would be research and development yeah um, and there's just like a high bar of quality for them. And, but it, it's one of those things where I do wonder a little bit if that's sort of people trying to figure out how to justify an expensive hobby <laughs> or, or a slightly expensive hobby. Um, or if like how much of that is necessarily true versus like how much of it is just due to things like, uh, inflations, corporate behavior, etc. I don't know anything about the Lego company, just to be clear. <laughs> but I was just thinking about that while I was reading some of the, the comments and stuff of people being like, well, actually, they're so expensive for a reason. It's not just like fluff uh, pricing, but I do wonder if there's, you know, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B kind of thing. <laughs> Okay, so I need two of these. And I need one of these. Just out of curiosity, would you guys prefer if the camera was a little bit more zoomed in for these kinds of streams? Because I know it's hard to tell like much of the detail. And yeah, the lighting is still not great, but it might be easier to tell what's going on if it was more zoomed in. So if 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 you would, please feel free to let me know and I can always make adjustments on, on that kind of thing. <laughs> I also keep putting my hand in the like directly in the way of my <laughs> tracking. <laughs> I have to stop doing that. Okay, and this goes. Here. Maybe slightly more zoomed in. All right, I will. I will keep that in mind for uh, next stream. I'm not gonna try and fiddle with it now too much, but 
we'll try more zoomed in next stream. Might be a little bit clearer if the camera can focus better on uh, some of the details too. It's nice seeing the other stuff on the desk too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, I can always bring that in too. But, but I think I also, it's just a matter of like, also ha it's like having enough space too, but I think I can work around that. I still want to make sure it's readable. Like people can tell what's going on while I'm on stream. You know, if you can't see every, every last bump and every last Lego, it's, you know, not the end of the world, but. <laughs> okay, I need two of these. That's always sort of my problem, is I'm always like, but what about the aesthetic? I want to stream Legos, but I want to be a, I want it to be aesthetic Legos. <laughs> uh, okay. I feel like this is going to be one of those things where I don't see the tree and what I'm making until I put like two or three things together and then I'm going to be like, oh, there it is. <laughs> Love the flower candle holder. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was a, uh, a very thoughtful Christmas gift from a family member. And I, 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 absolutely, I absolutely love this thing. It's so cute. <laughs> Still just thinking about that gap in my voice training that I've only just realized is so funny. <laughs> hmm. remember if I finished this thought earlier but I just remembered uh, when I was kind of talking about like cell phones and stuff that uh, yeah I was I, there's even been times in my life where I've considered uh, going back to like a flip phone from a smartphone I think there are just certain things that make that not feasible for me particularly the fact that um, I need I need Google Maps. I'm not, I, when I drive and I don't have, like, I'm, and I'm going somewhere, like, and I don't have Google Maps, like, you know, somewhere, like, out of town or something, I'm so nervous. I'm such a nervous driver. <laughs> and the ability to just have something be able to be like, all right, in approximately this amount of time, turn right onto this road, you know, that I cannot, I cannot... <laughs> I cannot not have that. And I know there's like GPSs and stuff, but I used to I used to have a GPS in uh, an old car and it was not not very reliable. Not not very reliable, but well, kind of not reliable, too. But <laughs> the interface was just not great. And I find that I, I feel like that a lot. Anytime I see a lot of. Uh, uh, Is that piece? This, I think. No, this doesn't go here, does it? No. Um, I still have no idea how I did the four and a half hour drive to Vegas. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> But yeah, just the idea of like going back to a flip phone and just like not having all of these things like 
readily available at all times. Like, there's some things that I feel like I question if it's... There's so many things that I think of convenience that have worked out and have helped people. And I think, like, it's hard because there are some things that I think maybe are not necessarily good for people as a whole, like, culturally, but I think are also very useful for some people and necessary for some people. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say, like, I don't want to, like, I guess say too much of anything, like, something controversial, really, but it feels like it, like, <laughs> It feels like it could be a hot button topic, but just things like, um, like meal delivery services or 24 hour, like Walmart super centers and stuff, which I actually don't think they, I don't think there really are any more of those. I think they stopped doing 24 hour, but I think like, you know, if you have a couple places in town that are like 24 hours or something, you know, um, it's not a bad thing, but I think, I don't know that I necessarily think that. 24-7 accessibility and availability of everything anytime is necessarily good for people. Um, yeah, I just think it's like, and that's sort of like some of the issue that I have with like phones sometimes is just like, yeah, it's, it's just, it's hard for me to put into words, but things like, like, um, I, I think there are effects sort of like, like, you know, if you can have anything you want or find anything you need, like at any hour, um, somewhere, it's sort of like, I guess I just wonder what that does to things like, um, like our, like our, our patients, our, um, tolerance for ambiguity. Um, some of these like soft sort of undefinable skills that are just involved in being a society. <laughs> I don't know. It's just something I think about. I don't have like strong opinions on it, but I just wonder. I also just wonder how to use this piece. I can't figure it out. <laughs> I think I, okay, I think I got it. Yeah, 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 there we go. One more swivelly boy, please. No, two more swivelly boys. Where the heck do these go? <laughs> I do wish there was like an arrow pointing to... Like, sometimes there is, but there's not always an arrow pointing to where the new pieces you're using go. <laughs> okay, so... What changed between these pictures? Subway surfers under Family Guy funny moments. Yeah, it's things like that. It's like, I, I, this is a thing that I, I think it's easy to sound like you're blaming like an individual for, but like the whole thing with like TikTok attention spans and, and all that and like the worry that people had about, first of all, it's like, it's really hard to even tell exactly how impactful stuff like that actually is in the moment, in the time that it's happening. put these on wrong <laughs> uh one okay there we go there we go because it's just like you know you know there's those sort of like dystopian pictures of like trains full of people who aren't talking to each other they're all on their phones but then you look back at pictures of people in like the 1920s on trains not talking to each other facing a newspaper and it's like well this is 
sort of the same thing. <laughs> um, you know, the, all the complaints about like, oh, people don't talk to each other anymore. And it's like, well, no, the more things change, the more things stay the same. <laughs> um, I guess I just want it, it's it's like I said, it's really hard to tell, I think, how how impactful those sorts of things are in the moment. Um, best you can do is guess and do what you can. Um, that reminds me of the Pokemon Go craze where people were out but on their phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think like that that was a cool one in that it like it got so many people out and like I every time I went out, you know, it was like I was going out like with a friend. We were going like I actually couldn't get my friends to go out with me enough <laughs> to go Pokemon hunting that that one summer. That truly that was like like I know I'm sure there's some some nostalgia like nostalgia maybe isn't the right word it's I don't know if it's old enough for nostalgia yet <laughs> but there that was truly like one summer that had like sort of a magical feeling to it that just like remembering back on that summer it was just like a time where everything felt like it was gonna be okay and I think everything will be okay it's just gonna take it just takes some work to get there <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, but it's like, but you're, but I mean, you're right. I mean, that's sort of like, that's sort of the crux of the issue is, is, you know, people say, you know, people are all worried that phones are making us disconnect and from each other. And like, the closer we get online, the further we actually get from each other, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, that was, that was an experience where for me, it felt like, you know, using our phones is bringing people closer together in real life. Um, you know, I, I there was like this this uh, this one. The, I remember there was this one gathering place where it felt like like half of the town was coming to come hunt Pokemon every uh, <laughs> every Sunday or every weekend or whatever. Um, and you know there was a lot of community around it so it's 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 hard to say i think it's more about what you're doing with what you're using like whether it be like phones whatever than what than the than the actuality of what it is you're using but i mean i think it's also hard to disagree with the to in my perspective to to disagree with the idea that it is easier to be disconnected with with phones and everything and I, I think there are one other actually this is kind of unrelated but one other interesting issue that's come up with um, uh, technology and phones and iPads and stuff lately is actually it's such a strange thing because all of this new technology is making it so people like like um, Gen Z and especially Gen Alpha is having so much trouble with technology that's not old, like laptops, computers, desktops, things like that. But because like millennials grew up using computers and having to troubleshoot computers because things were very janky and broken a lot of the times in, in old software and old computers, um, there is sort of this issue that's really arisen that, that, that I've I've heard from like I've I've read like multiple like news articles about and stuff like people being like like younger kids and stuff a lot of the time don't understand how to use a computer because everything is totally different like we think about a computer and an iPad as being similar things but the usage experience of them is entirely different um like uh, just in the same way that I don't really like touch screens. I don't like, I, I like things with, with buttons. I like, um, you know, to be able to like go in and, and tinker and everything. And it's just like harder to do with things like, like tablets and things. But in that sense, like I grew up with computers, so that's hard for me. But all of these, you know, sort of the, the, <laughs> the iPad kid generation or whatever, um, people want to call it um didn't grow up using computers they grew up on 
iPads or tablets or whatever. Uh, and so now there's all of these like reports about like from teachers and like computer classes and high schools and stuff who are like, all right, go to your desktop. And kids are being like, where is that? Uh, or telling like children to under like to, to go into their video folder and they're like, what's a folder? And it's such an interesting phenomenon because uh, I, I read sort of a, if you were having to like visually depict how information is stored on a computer, um, you, it, it's very layered, you know, you have a folder with a subfolder and the files in them. And that top folder is maybe like in uh, on your desktop or whatever. So it's like sort of cascading. It, it branches. Whereas um, uh, smartphones and tablets are very much like they're like a uh, almost like a repository. They're more of like a bin where everything is sort of thrown in. You don't really have the concept like you do sort of, but you don't have as much of the concept of folders and everything um, as you do on, like on phones, as you do on PCs. And so there are certain concepts like that, that like a lot of the, like the younger generation, I sound so old. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Crimson, hello. I'm not sure why my bot is not working at the moment, but pronouns are they, them. He, him is also okay, but they, them are main, main ones. <laughs> Thank you for checking. <laughs> Handsome or beautiful, I want to know what to say with my first message. I prefer neither because I don't know what to do with compliments. <laughs> but no, for, uh, either, either is okay. I'm not, I'm not bothered by either. <laughs> I, I appreciate, I appreciate either way. <laughs> But yeah, it's just, it's an interesting thing. And yeah, Edison, uh, I've seen some elementary schools start to teach coding, so I'm unsure in general. Yeah. And I mean, I don't think it's like, it's not like a permanent problem or anything like that. It's just, you know, maybe just needs a fix like that. Because I, th I this is maybe my bias from coming from, you know, computers, but I just don't, I don't think computers are going anywhere. I think that, you know, in terms of being replaced by laptop or not laptops, um, but like tablets or, or, um, you know, iPads, things like that. Like, um, I, I just think there's a lot of capability and things like, like, you know, programming work desktops for, for people who work in, in fields that need like high intensity computing, you know, um, a lot of like 3D and like CAD modeling and everything like um, you just can't do some of that stuff um, on 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 a tablet in my like in my opinion i just don't see a way to do that but i don't know maybe i'm maybe there's something i don't see that the future has but <laughs> i don't know that's a that was a huge tangent but <laughs> just a very interesting topic to me i have to figure out where i was <laughs> We'll figure that out by the uh, parts I'm able to find. <laughs> okay, so I just put those there. So I need these two pieces here. <laughs> Uh, what are we building? We're building a bonsai tree. Hold on, I'll grab the box and show ya. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, my squeaky chair says hello. <laughs> but this is, this is what we're building tonight. We probably won't finish it, but that's what we're starting. Oh, sorry, I bonked the mic going to be doing all of that in Neuralink eventually, perhaps. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, uh, like, obviously, the thing is, I wonder 
Like, the idea of... This is just me just purely fantasizing about, like, what possibilities lie for technology in the future. It's maybe fun to be hopeful about technology sometimes instead of as hard as it is rather than being dystopian about it. I know there's a lot of things right now that make it easy um, to do that, but... And I've definitely sunken into some... <laughs> despair thoughts about that kind of thing before and I just don't really want to do that all the time so I think maybe it's healthy to think about you know for those of you who remember like technology in like 2008 2010 like when the first iPhone came out and there was this very there's this time that's hard to describe because it's so different from how it is now where things were very hopeful about technology um, and I think now, I think some people very much still are, but I think the concept of being really hopeful about technology nowadays, not, not always, certainly, but I think tends to be associated with concepts, uh, that are maybe a little more distasteful to a lot of people, things like AI and stuff. But I think there's still a lot of helpful things and impactful things that can come from technology. It's just learning how to be smart about what we're using, what we're making. Um, but the, the idea that, um, the main influence of technology in the future can be a positive thing is, is something that's nice to go back to. Uh, as much as things are changing and growing in the future, seeing older things also come back is going to be cool in the future, like how vinyls and Polaroids have become popular again. I'm so interested in what past tech is going to interest the future. Yeah, certainly. I, that As I've gotten older and seen that happen more, it's very interesting. Um, and that's why, like, honestly, like, I know everybody jokes about, like, oh, I don't want to get older. Like, oh, no, I'm aging. And people, a lot of the times, are afraid of it, I think. And, and especially, like, you know, getting older is is a little bit <laughs> maybe demonized on like tiktok and stuff like um but there are good things that come with it too there's there's a lot i've enjoyed as i've gotten older and that's that's one of them things is, is seeing things that that i enjoyed when i was younger come back you know seeing uh new twists on things and everything i don't know there's 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 uh there's positives <laughs> saw something about CDs come up recently and that's exciting. Yeah, I remember I saw uh, my buddy Lillen uh, posted, uh, for those of you who, who are not familiar, Lillen v. Demon. V. Damon? I still, I gotta learn how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry, Lillen. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I think it's, I think it's just Demon, but the A, uh, in like, the 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 spelling that he uses uh not that uh that has always thrown me off even with like old tools like if anybody remembers like uh demon tools light <laughs> i don't know why i remember that name um but it was a uh software for like mounting virtual uh discs and everything back in the limewire era <laughs> very commonly used <laughs> Not by me, of course. Of course not. <laughs> but, uh... Uh... Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't want these ones. These are too small. I think I just had two of these, and I don't know what I did with the other. <laughs> That's a problem for later me. Um... But yeah, he, he, uh, uh, Lillen had posted something on Twitter, I think, about how some research team had developed, uh, CDs that hold, like, 200 terabytes of data. And I was like, heck yeah, physical media's coming back, baby. Get those optical disk drives whirring. <laughs> I usually pronounce this Damon. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure which is the correct pronunciation. Dang, LimeWire, ancient technology. <laughs> Let me, I gotta, I gotta hit you with the frost wire, not even the lime wire. We gotta go underground, hit the, hit the frost wire. <laughs> I 
I feel like anytime I mention stuff like that, it's like ha like half of my chat is also like <laughs> like my age roughly, and they're all like, ah, oh, nostalgic. Also, Jesus, I'm old. <laughs> and then also like, and then you have the other half of the people watching who are like, what the what the frick is a frost wire? What the what? Do you, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so this goes here. Tell your friends about your hot lime wire grabs on MSN Messenger. You, uh, yeah, I mean, if you really want to publicize it, really just stick it right in the the AIM signature. Put it in your AIM signature before you get all your uh, your coding done to really optimize that to let all your friends know how cool you are. <laughs> God, MSN Messenger. Honestly, MSN Messenger was kind of the goat. MSN Messenger, AOL, not AOL, AIM rather. Y'all remember when you could get CDs in a magazine to download the internet? <laughs> and AOL gave you like, I think a lot of the times they had like a three day free trial or something like that. A free trial of the internet. <laughs> it's like the opposite of burning books. <laughs> God, and do you remember with the uh, CDs, there used to be that thing. Oh, what was it called? Oh, what was it called? I think I, like I had like I had it. I remember when we got a computer that could do it. I was like, I loved doing this. I would burn CDs just to do this, but where you could actually like burn an image into the top of the CD. And yeah, oh, crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> I still think that's cool. I would still do that. Mm, okay, now I need one of these thick boys. Do, 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 do. Does it go in the center or where does that go? No, not the center. There we go. Do you remember your old AOL screen names? I do, and I will not be sharing them. <laughs> oh my gosh. But there was just something, something like that hit different about like the idea, like, because what one of the main things I used like AIM for was, uh, and MSN was, was, uh, mainly AIM for me, for though, for this particular thing was, uh, Role playing, you know, I would go on uh, Live Journal and uh, go in the RP communities, and you would post an ad, and you would be like, "All right, here's my AIM. Hit me up and let me know what you're interested in." Um, I that was like, role playing was like a huge part of my life for a very, very long time. It was like my central hobby for for many years. Picked this name for RuneScape in intermediate school and it has never changed. I love that. I love the dedication, Peanut. <laughs> I can see the tree starting to form on the pages, not in real life. This, this ain't a tree yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> I remember these computer magazines which came with software CDs and they always advertised it as great value. But it was just freeware, which you could get easily from the internet. Yeah. <laughs> There's so, so many funny things. Oh my gosh. One like core memory I have is like going over to my my uh, family's house when I was young for New Year's Eve. And I was... Like, at this point in my life, I was on, like, Gaia Online all the time, like, customizing my avatar and making sure everybody knew I had the Nightmare Claws. Uh, <laughs> um, I really be hitting on those, some of these niche 
<laughs> I'm hitting some niche notes tonight. But uh yeah, I would I would uh go on Guy Online and like and I remember I I, I uh was on there on New Year's Eve one year on uh on uh, my aunt's house on our AOL uh dial up internet and uh so I would, uh, and I was, you know, just messing around with Guy Online while all the adults were, were, you know, having their New Year's Eve celebration and all that. And I remember, like, they, they sort of had, like, a prank, I guess, for, like, New Year's Eve, where everybody's avatars started, like, randomly just turning into different avatars. Randomly dressed. Um, every time you refresh the page, I think it was different. Um... And I remember like panicking because I was like, wait, is this a glitch? What's happening? Why is this happening? Uh, <laughs> it's a very simple time. Hmm. AI chatbots are rough. They degrade really fast and get stuck in loops real easy. Neural models can't hold contextual information well. Yeah, I can imagine. I don't know. I, I, I've i done some studying on like a... Um, um, oh gosh, I'm blanking on all of the words immediately on like AI and uh, like uh, machine learning and, and like large language models, things like that, like um, like in school, like I've, I've taken some some classes that have had stuff about that, mo mostly more tangential or like um, have gone to like extracurricular activities where, where people were talking about this sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly no expert or anything about any of it, but that, that there's certain things that are just difficult to imagine being able to do with, with AI that a lot of AI is trying to promise. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting to see how much of that will flesh out. It's also, um, this is, this is. This absolutely is a hot button topic, but I have thoughts on it, so I'm going to talk about it. And if <laughs> if you disagree, that's okay. Um, but I think AI is. I'm I'm not about to come out and say I support AI. Just to be clear, <laughs> that's not what's coming. I'm not going to hit you with that one. <laughs> but I think there are good and useful things that can come out of AI. Like there's like four careers like I know with like voice acting was a big one where people were worried about AI because, uh, you know, the idea of, of you know, having AI generated voices. Um, but there are also helpful things that can come out of it. Like there was a there's a program uh, that I recently learned about for voice actors where you can actually upload your odd like you you upload your audio and then you upload a script and it basically like tells you like what's like if, if you've like missed something if you the words are mismatched um and like if you have any like audio oddities like crackling or anything like that it'll tell you and it'll give you like a timestamp and like audiobook recording uh, in particular is a very intensive process i've looked into it some and it's a very very intensive process like for a beginner like one hour of audiobook work can take like five hours to to create um you know and even experienced people like it's like it's generally like three hours four hours of work to one hour of pro like produced audiobook um and the idea of being able to cut that down so significantly with tools like that that's an extremely useful thing in my opinion but it's hard because it, it's hard to look at those sorts of things in a positive light when you have all of these things like you know like voice generator voice generating like ai and stuff that is sort of trying to harm the field maybe not intentionally i i i, I maybe this is controversial but i truly don't think that a lot of people building these things are trying to harm the industries that they are. I think there is, it, it's a disconnect. It's like the same thing where like uh, in the US, like 
all of the people making like policies, all of our politicians, people making decisions about health and science and um, public safety. They don't have experience in health and science and public safety and food and whatever. They have, they're, they're consulted by people, but all these people all have law degrees. They all have studied law and policy and, and those things. So they're sort of relying on other experts. Um, and I think a lot of the time will end up in the wrong place. Um, I, this is not necessarily about politicians. I think a lot of politicians maybe are doing wrong things for bad reasons. <laughs> but I think a lot of people who are trying to push things like AI forward and stuff are not intentionally trying to do harm. They're trying to help in a way that feels helpful to them, but they don't have the knowledge of these other fields. You know, the idea of, you know, to, to somebody who exists in a bubble saying like, oh, I'm going to make uh, um, like an AI that can generate people's voices uh, because that's going to be really helpful for people who make games and they and it's going to make it more affordable for them to make games and all of that. But they don't see the flip side of, yeah, it's going to make it affordable for them because it's going to make it impossible for other people to live on the career and this art that they've nurtured um and these people have put you know ha have have really just dig their heels in and that's that's where it becomes you know a negative thing like that's where you can start i think sort of blaming people maybe it's not the nicest way to put it but <laughs> the only way i can think of um but yeah it's just uh things like that are, are difficult it, because you've got these these things that are bad for for so many industries that are sort of poisoning the water and it makes it hard to see the good and in, the, the the good uses of of things like ai that can be helpful in in certain fields and in certain uses um maybe not and certainly not to the degree that i think it's touted but i don't know Another long-winded tangent. <laughs> hmm. The last neat thing I saw with AI was using it to try and simulate surface electrostatics and interactions of water. Yeah, it's like things like that. There are, I think, important uses. Like the idea of, um, I, I believe I remember hearing something a while back about um, like, like being able to use chat, like AI for um, coming up with new, like, medical breakthroughs of, like, sort of testing whether, like, what certain chemicals will do in reactions to each other and using AI to formulate, like, more options to, to deal with certain diseases or viruses, what, what medicines could theoretically be effective against them, um, that could, like, just absolutely, like, just make like the the development of things like medicines that will save people's lives much faster um so it's i think it's an important field but when you have all of these topical very socially relevant issues that are sort of poisoning the well it's hard to it's hard to look through that you know and i i mean that even for me you know like i, I don't mean that like i'm an exception to that like um even talk, you know, talking about this stuff, I feel like I'm saying bad things, like advocating for some uses of AI. But it, it's, uh, it, I don't know. It's, it's truly, I think, just the the well is is sort of poisoned right now. And it's it's also difficult because you sort of have the 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 whole Pandora's box phenomenon, you know, of well, yeah, there there are plenty of good uses, but are we able to implement those good uses and weed out the bad uses um i don't know time will tell <laughs> hmm. inherent issue with capitalism trying to commodify art in order to avoid actually compensating artists exactly yeah profit maximization uh, truly one of uh, uh, 
in my opinion, I think pro like profit maximization is like one of the, if not like the leading cause for kind of a, most things that are not good right now. <laughs> AI is also great to restore and enhance old footage, like early film recordings or music. Yeah. So, I mean, historical preservation, you know, things like that. Um, I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard subject. It's difficult. And I know a lot of people maybe like like on stream don't want to talk about this kind of stuff. And I don't mean this in like, a, I'm brave, so I'm going to talk about it. I just have a loud mouth. <laughs> I have a loud mouth and a lot of thoughts. Um, but I like... I like to talk about this kind of stuff because I think I think the more we don't talk about this kind of thing together, I think the harder it gets to talk about this kind of thing together. Like, it's like the same issue as like, you know, there's been that sort of like rule for the longest time, uh, like for for like in America, people have always said like, like at holidays, like don't go to family and talk like the, the two things you don't talk about are religion and politics and I understand that from a the perspective of like just trying to have a good time for holidays and everything but I think in a general sense the less we talk about important and hard things the harder it's going to get to talk about them because we don't know how to do it so I don't know I just I like talking about like fun and lighthearted stuff but I also just think it's like important to talk about this kind of thing once in a while. And I didn't, you know, I don't intentionally try to talk about it, but I just also don't try to avoid it, you know? If I start getting on a ramble about AI ethics on stream, you know, that's where we're gonna roll. And if some people, maybe some people come just to have, you know, lighthearted entertainment and stuff and, and don't want to be here for that, and that's okay. I don't blame anybody for that. You know, just, just do what's right for you. <laughs> I understand your stance. There are so many possibilities with AI, but with the possibilities of good, there's no way to ignore the foreseeable bad that'll bring. Yeah, that's that. I'm 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 fully on, I'm fully on 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 there with that. Yeah, that's and that's exactly what I mean with the Pandora's box thing. Is like you can't you you can't really let this out to do good without it also doing you know some of the bad that we've seen. Um, and it's just hard to figure out how do we maximize the good while mitigating the bad, but also accept that it's probably not going to go away, which is, which sucks. It sucks. I, I'm, I think it sucks, <laughs> but there's, there's not, there's not a lot we could do about it. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know if there is. It's just one of those things that, that, you know, it's, it's part of the world now and we need to figure out how to make that a good thing instead of a bad thing hard subjects are fun to talk about in the civilized conversations yeah i think so too i think i think it's just figuring out how to get there and there's there's differences you know um like certainly i'm not i'm not gonna come on stream and talk about hard subjects that i don't feel like I have an ability to talk about. Like I have some opinions on some things that I'm like, this is these are what this is what I think. But I also acknowledge that I don't have any real education or knowledge, or I haven't looked into this subject enough to be publicly saying these things, you know? These are sometimes you have inner thoughts, sometimes you have inner opinions, and that's that's they're 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 for you and that's okay to have them. But you just have to recognize when you don't necessarily ha like have the expertise on something to be trying to impose those opinions, you know, or or really share them in a way that's irresponsible. But yeah, I like I, I, for a little while I had kind of tried to avoid talking about this kind of stuff on streams and stuff because that's sort of the you know, the general advice, don't talk about, like, you know, again, religion and politics and heavy stuff on streams, but 
I think for me, I've decided that it's an important thing to me, and I don't want to avoid it, so I'm not going to. <laughs> mm, geez, it's like 2 a.m. already. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I noticed that a little bit ago. Yeah, I mean, this I've been streaming for like four hours, and I'm, I'll probably still go a little longer. So <laughs> it's crazy. True, like I, I kid you not. Like when I was saying. I don't know how obvious some of the changes I've made, like obviously like getting rid of the point redeems and notifications and stuff, but some of the stuff I've done on like the back end just for my own personal mental health and stuff while I'm streaming already I have been a game changer. I could not stream like this <laughs> before, <laughs> especially not like two days in a row. And I don't know that I'll stream tomorrow, but I'm already like thinking about like maybe I will. Maybe it'd be fun. I still want to, I want to make this Lego and I will have him finished it tonight, so. Um. Sorry, give me one second to figure out where the heck this goes. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it's, it's. So I'm, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> uh, what are your opinions on Brian League of Legends? Yuki, thank you for the sub. Uh, uh, 10 out of 10, much fun, very scream. <laughs> it is so funny, like with, this is a full topic switch. We're jumping from AI to my thoughts on playing Briar League of Legends. <laughs> um, but it's so funny, like having got into, uh, playing Briar and stuff. Because I've realized, like, the more I've played, the more I realize, like, like, there are other champions I enjoy and stuff, and, uh, but at least in, like, in Summoner's Rift specifically, especially for jungling, I try, I've tried so many other junglers, and I've found other people that I enjoy for that position, like, Gwen is, is, is fun, I'm not good at her, but I've tried, I've tried, who have I tried? Gwen, Belveth, Nocturne, Amumu. Uh, da, 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 da. I can't remember who else. Some others. Fiddlesticks. Um, and I've realized I don't really have a lot of fun playing them in the jungle. It's fine, you know, if I get a Briar Band and I have to play them for a little bit, that's that's not anything. That's fine. I can have fun playing with friends for, for a few games, not playing Briar, but... Um, yeah, I've realized I'm not... <laughs> I don't think I'm a jungle player. I'm a Briar player. <laughs> Anytime I have to like play a champion other than her, I'm always like, I'm so used to like having her mobility with like her W speed increase and her R to get around the map wherever I want. And I'm like, whenever I don't have that, I'm like, it's so slow to get anywhere. <laughs> Can we put the cannon from Earth into Summoner's Rift, please? <laughs> That's a lie, actually. Please don't do that, but... <laughs> mm. <laughs> the pain of the single champ main hit when the band phase hits? Yeah. <laughs> Streams are helping me study for exams, so I'm glad we're both enjoying it. I'm glad, too. I'm glad. I hope your studying's going well. Mm -hmm. Okay, this like this. All right, now we're starting to get some of these fun little funky bits and stuff in here for like tree branches and everything. I think we're approaching tree. Okay, and that goes in here. Let's try not to break it. Where 
is this? Where are you? <laughs> Here? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Approaching tree velocity rapidly. Not rapidly. I don't do anything rapidly. <laughs> Tree? Do we have tree? <gasps> we have tree, sort of. <laughs> we have a tree trunk. Amazing, impeccable, incredible. Yeah, we got a tree. Did I forget? I hope I didn't forget to put this somewhere. Like I missed it or something. Did I? I'm worried about this one. <laughs> or did this? I think I did forget to put this on at some point. Yeah, 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 because there's one just like it on the other side. I think I probably just saw, like, the instruction for it and thought it was for the other piece and thought I'd already done it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Mm. Okay, now I need one of these pieces. I need this piece. On the back. Okay, we're covering the blue piece. I was wondering how that blue piece was gonna. I was wondering how that was gonna get worked in. like they're they've got us starting to build some some new stuff here i think it's it's all brown it's still for the tree but for, for the tree trunk i guess it's all for the trees into some capacity <laughs> but uh i think we might call it there just so i have enough to finish up on stream next time probably do a shorter stream to finish it up maybe just like a couple hours <laughs> is uh is that it's like 40 pages left but i think this seems like the most complicated part i think uh the uh, where is like the like putting like the the leaves on and stuff maybe that'll be more complicated than i'm giving credit for but if we have to do another four hour stream well then we have to do another four hour stream <laughs> technically you're growing the tree i'm trying i'm trying <laughs> hmm. but i'm thinking we might start wrapping up there i gotta go reheat my my pot pie <laughs> but uh <laughs> i think that's gonna be it for me for tonight yeah that seems like a good i think we've we've reached a good natural uh natural closing point here with the finishing up the tree thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight the sakura variant had more to do for the leaves but the green one should be simpler ah gotcha gotcha well maybe that'll give us some time to to do all the green and then we can take away some of the green and then put the pink on so we have like little blossoms um it's actually it's a uh, kind of perfect timing for that right now too <laughs> so I think this is this is probably gonna be where we start wrapping up, where we start saying goodbye. We are gonna raid somebody tonight, though. 
So let's see. Thanks for the stream. See you next time. Of course. It was nice having you, Father Lee. Thank you for stopping by. Same to you, Elton. Same Nick's. Same Amy. Yeah, this was a this was a cool night. It was a it was a fun stream. Got to talk about a lot of uh maybe not the most fun subjects, but it was interesting, I I think at least, hearing what you guys had to say on some of it. Yeah, and I mean, if we're ever, like, talking about stuff like that, too, please feel free if, if, if you want to, if you would like to converse in chat or anything, I'm always happy to hear other people's, like, thoughts on stuff we're talking about. <laughs> mm. Get some rest yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll try. <laughs> All right, but we're gonna start getting our our raid set up. Uh, Yuki seems like he's doing some some ASMR over over on his channel right now. So we're gonna go go say hello to Yuki. Uh, no raid message or anything. Uh, so please don't feel like you gotta do anything. Just uh. We're just gonna scoot over there and relax and continue on with the cozy vibes. But thank you guys for hanging out, especially so late. I know it's late for some of you. I know it's probably very early for others of you. <laughs> thank you for for just letting me talk for for building some Lego with me. Um, this was very nice. I enjoyed this a lot. <laughs> I want to do this again. <laughs> I really want to get the succulent collection. See if see if I can get my hands on that. But for now, good night, good morning, good time zone, and gooby. I will see you next time. <laughs>